gentlemen, today is a very, very emotional day for me. There's a movie by Robert De Niro and Cuba Gooding, uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. Few Good Men. In there, there's a scribe written ASNF. Robert De Niro asked me, what is it the old man taught you that made you so strong that you could never give up? At the end of the movie, he reveals, a son never forgets. A S N F. When I had my second innings in astrology, I was jobless for a long time, had a bad period. And there was this young man who helped me through. Before I met my Guru C.S. Patel, it was this man who was and he is still kind of my first guru. Usually in India I have this notion, oh, a guru cannot be young. He has to be old. He's got to have beard. He's got to be white haired. All these kind of things. But a guru rarely teaches you techniques. He gives you love. He gives you the strength. Of course, I learned techniques from him. The man I'm going to introduce today. But I still remember those were the days of Yahoo groups. And I was told there is this young man. He's like the wind. He's a genius. He's a Rishi reborn. Everything was told to me about this guy. And when I started interacting with him, I realized he's a Rishi reborn. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the Sultan of Astrology, Mr. Visti Larson. Please welcome him. Visti. Such a pleasure, such an honor. What a welcome note. <laughs> Must be. Lovely, Sunil. Thank you for that. It's a, I'm flattered to have been invited by you today. It is a real pleasure. And uh, with two very good friends, uh, both long friends, Phyllis and Sunil, it's a real pleasure to be able to talk to you and to your, to your scene, to your crowd today. And uh, I look forward to giving you a very nice session. Uh, a Rishi reborn? Well, now, there, somebody's going to open my chart and, this, and debate which combination is Rishi. <laughs> and uh, I'm no Vivekananda, <laughs> certainly not. But, uh, but all, all that I ascribe to, to, to have been able to give to people and the good that I've been able to give to people, I ascribe to my teacher, to my guru. Uh, just as everybody has their guru whom, whom they have benefited from, my guru, Sanjay Rath, has been my blessing in my life. Sanjay and, uh, without that, I could not be doing what I'm doing today. Sanjay Ji, I, 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 if I don't add this, then it will be wrong of me. During those days of my life, 13 years back, you and me know each other since 13, 14 years. Yes. During those days, Sanjay Ji gave me so much of love. So much of love, so much of special attention, special attention. I still remember. Do you remember? Do you remember you and me in Nagpur? Oh, those were days. <laughs> those days. You know, those you, you gave me the movie The Hero, and I watched oh, it yeah. throughout the night. Such a great <laughs> spiritual movie. You don't remember the movie Hero, Jet Li? I remember. I remember. Yes. And how, how all here. you guys used to be. In my room, only 15, 20 people. We used right. to eat snacks and I didn't know who's going yes, to pay yes. the bill. I didn't know who's going to pay the bill. I was jobless. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Of course, wow. Lord, it's a pleasure. They were good times, you know. <laughs> we, yes, yes. You got married. I got married. You have yes. children. I have children. Thank yes. you for, this, for connecting me and Visti. Thank you so much. It's my privilege, Thank but... You. I'm so honored to be able to do so, so, so fortunate. He's going to teach something brilliant today. What everybody is going to realize, even after 25, 30 years, 40 years in Jyotish, when you hear this young man, this great guru teach, 
you will realize we don't know astrology. Of course, I agree. Of course, his book, Jyotish Fundamentals, I still remember when it came out. And many people swear, I, 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 I know hundreds of people who swear by your book, that till date is the best book ever on astrology. Wow. Okay. So I, mean, I mean, I know some people are not going to like it. Okay. But I always believe you love somebody, you love somebody from your heart. You know, okay. you can read Visti's book 10 times <laughs> and you'll realize, man, this man is a genius. And how much knowledge have you given free on the internet, Visti? That's all. That's all. So, Phyllis, ask the questions. How, when, <laughs> we want to know everything. Well, how, Visti, would you be kind enough to tell us maybe how you met Sanjay, what brought you to Jyotish? This is always of interest to people who are coming up close to the boundary. So if you could tell us a bit about how you found these gems, well, <laughs> I think that would be valuable. My pleasure. And uh, well, it all started um, just around the year 1998, just about that time. Uh, that is when um, I was in high school and uh, a, a girl from our class, a classmate. So, sorry, and, you were in school? I was in high school, yes, high school. And um, a, a lady from our class, a classmate, came into the school. Uh, and on this day, apparently, we had something else to study than our regular textbooks because she decided that we had to start looking at each other's charts. And uh, particularly, she was talking about one's ascendant, Lagna, ascendant. In and, Denmark. Uh, in, in Den yes, in Denmark. Yes, yes. Denmark. 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 And until then, everybody, uh, we, everybody was looking in magazines and looking at, oh, within this state and this state, this is my sign, etc. And so we were looking at sun signs, basically, like you, you, every new beginner in astrology would. And, and she talked about ascendant, and uh, I asked questions about it. I didn't understand what is this ascendant, and where is it, and how to see it. And she, and she knew a little bit, enough to talk about the ascendant within one year. I knew what an ascendant and all the planets meant and where they were supposed to be and how to read them in a, in a Western astrological chart, tropical astrology. Wow. Within a year after that, I was deep into practicing Western astrology. Okay? Mm -hmm. So two years after, that is when my rumblings began. I wondered, okay, I've studied for two years very intensely on the internet. So much so that my studies in school were being hampered by it. <laughs> As with many of those who get obsessed with the topic. Your and parents did not object? Oh, yes, very much so. <laughs> no wondering. And um, so uh, my parents, they are uh, of a mixed descent. My father is from Denmark and my mother is from Kenya, Kenya, East Africa. And uh, I grew up in East Africa, Kenya, until I was about nine years of age. And then we came to Denmark. And uh, whilst in Kenya, I had many friends. Actually, most of my friends were of Indian or Pakistani descent. Most Indians, actually. All right. And uh, I had a very good relationship with them. And I was even gifted by our close family friends, uh, these magazines that you still have in India today, these comic books of the Indian gods, of the stories from Mahabharata and whatnot. Oh, that's still, how you got it. And I still have them. I'll say those old magazines. And just around the year 2000, I started opening them again. And around that time, I started wondering, where is this tradition of Jyotish? Where is that Tradition, where is that kept alive? So far, I'm just hearing research and seeing people researching on different topics within the Western tropical sphere. Uh, not to take away the Western tropical sphere. They have a tradition also. I just didn't discover it at that point in time. And so I said to myself, I need to add to my knowledge. I need to get into a tradition of sorts. And I found that what that was available was the Vedic astro astrological sphere. 
And uh, they, they were, I still give uh, uh, my uh, respect to the astrologers of then. Um, I began the systems approach at that time. Okay. And uh, by VK Chaudhary. And that was the first thing, because that was easy to learn and it was available. And uh, with time, I saw there was this giant over there in some email forum named Sanjay Rat. And he had a student, Narasim Harao. And when he was writing, I realized, oh my God, what is this? And I couldn't help myself. And I started studying very intensely under Sanjay Rat. I, big, I joined them officially in, in the form of Sri Jagannath Center that Sinti had made in 2001. And uh, in 2002, uh, just about, yes, I met him for the first time also in 2001, Sanjay. And uh, in 2002, I uh, was given the opportunity to begin teaching. And I was announced as a Jyotish Guru at that point in time. Because I was very prolific, they, they saw I was a good, uh, a good hub for others to learn from, if you will. And uh, I was initiated into the Guru Mantras. And I've been studying very intensely under my Guruji, Pandit Sanjirat, since then. Um, and that is where I come from. That's, that's, my, that's how I came into Jyotish. All from a girl in class. Oh, my God. Yes. Do you still remember her name? Yes, yes. Nadia. Oh. That's her name. We, say it, we pronounce it slightly differently in Danish. Mm -hmm. But, yes. And uh, I've long looked at my chart and wondered, is it that Venus-Jupiter exchange which, which is giving the knowledge that Venus influence? You know? I, I, I just opened your chart just to check that. I just <laughs> opened your chart, you know. So I'm yes. talking to you. I just opened. Indeed, chart. indeed. So, so that's where it started. And uh, I've since then, I've been, uh, I was first made Jyotish Guru. Then I became a Jaimini scholar. I've completed the Jamini Sutra program. I have recently got a J Jyotish Pandita certification. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's all knowledge. Certifications are, are, uh, are not as important for me. And uh, I have been studying since then. So now I've come to, it's 16 years in Vedic astrology. Wow. And uh, that's, many, that's the way we met. Loads of students. I still remember back then. 2004, 2005, you had loads and loads of students. It's true. I, I, when somebody shouts loudest, everybody runs, to, runs there. And that's how it is. <laughs> oh, first thing. What is it that you have not learned? I know you, you, you've done so much. There must be something that you must have left. What I, I, will, I will be very honest with you. If you ask me every topic that I have touched, I have maybe learned two or three levels off, and I want to know, know level four and five. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> if you ask me, there's no such thing as basics. Okay? Oh. Everything is advanced. Okay. If I tell you that, uh, that oh, I, if somebody says they know Karaka, I will say, which planets are Karaka for chairs, couches, sofas? Which are, which are the Karakas for them? Because according to me, if you know something, you know the whole thing. So yeah. like that, there is a depth to everything. But uh, there are topics that I would really like to spend more time on, which I've only touched a little bit. And uh, they are always pertaining to balas. Because balas, I believe, they have the, the complexity of balas, such as shad balas, vimshopak balas. Mm -hmm. they, 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 there's one way to use them at a surface level, but it, the way I was taught is each little dot or point matters. If somebody says there are 20 points in Vimshopak Bala, each one point means something. Okay? If somebody says that a certain uh, house of the chart has a certain Ashtaka Varga Bala, I don't need to know the amount. I need to know what each one point means. <laughs> okay? I, I, the, way I was, the way I was taught, uh, uh, for example, we are taught, uh, I've recently been speaking on a topic and I've learned for some time, the Drish, uh, Drishti Pada, a very basic topic, Drishti Pada, Pada Drishti, you know, one, two, three, or four Padas of Drishti, okay, of aspects, strength of aspect. One point is one Bija mantra. Two points is a Baini ah. mantra. Three points is a, a, a what we call a, um, it's a, the Kartari mantra. Four points is a mantra. After four, it's only a mantra. And a maximum mantra is 15 as far as Pada is concerned, at least as far as a full mantra is concerned. 
Okay? So each small thing is one small thing. The, uh, my Guruji spoke once when he reminisced how his Guruji taught him Ashtakavarga, his Gurudev, Kashinatra. And he explained, well, when you know the entire Shakti Path, which is the entire worship of the Divine Mother, then only will you understand Ashtakavarga. So the way that we approach astrology in this tradition and the way I was taught, and it's ingrained in me to look at any subject of Jyotish, is every small thing matters. Look at the small things and you can make fantastic predictions. The big things are very superficial. The small things are the essence. True. So, true. so that is how I look at it. That's, so when somebody says, what do you need to study? I have to go through all my basics again and again and again many times. <laughs> but balas are my great interest and where I wish to spend more time. Okay. okay. And uh, you, you come every year to India and you teach at Bintan? Uh, I have not always been teaching uh, okay. in India. I've mostly been teaching in Europe. Okay. And, uh, but it is so that uh, in, uh, for the next few years, I will also be teaching in India. That's Fantastic. true. Fantastic. So if people want to learn from you, they just need to visit your website, shrigaruda.com. Yes. Okay. That's right. That's but, right. But you have great amount of knowledge out over there. I mean, it's real tough. I mean, somebody knew they would... Find it tough. I mean, so how, how do you accept students? I mean, how do how do you? Uh, is it a very strict procedure? What's the thing? I'm sorry, I'm asking. I'm just not going the normal route of interview. Uh, at present, I'm in a stage where I'm not accepting new students for a little bit of time now because okay. right, I have a batch now that I'm trying to lead to the end of a of a course of a of a of a textbook. After which, I start accepting new students and. Uh, the thing is, I, I never say no to a student. I let them first come, ask, show what they want to know. I guide them a little bit, guide them a bit more, guide them a bit more. And we reach a stage where, we, where they say, okay, they are ready to learn something higher. And then I take them to that when the batch is ready, when the opportunity is ready. Okay. All right? Okay. I, you want to know whether you should study is Jyotish. Your fifth Lord has to be associated with either Mars, the Sun, or the 12th house. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. And so, what, what are the signs of a great astrologer? Raj Jyotish will have yogas between Guru and Shukra. You already have that in your horoscope. Uh, sort of required, you know, <laughs> at this stage. Because you want to live of it. And everything associated with Jupiter will ensure you can sustain yourself. A good astrologer should, should be able to sustain yourself. Okay. So, Guru Shukra Yogas. All right? Okay. Now, there are other things to this also. Uh, an astrologer who dedicates a lot of time to astrology will usually have their fourth lord from sun associated with Agni Grahas. Okay. Man, and, finally, and finally, if you ask me what's the most important criteria for an astrologer, the 11th house has to be associated with the Chara Atmakaraka, the planet with most degrees. Thank God, Vishti, you're a genius. Oh, I mean, I, I'm not trying to boast, but all three combinations that you said is there in my horoscope. I wish I you should be right. You spend a lot of time in this. <laughs> yeah. All right from top. But I wish, you know, I wish, I wish I had studied, you know, I went into administration. Anyway. One question that's always been hitting me and I wanted to ask you last so many years is you wrote a book that created a sensation. I hope so. Uh, you know it. I mean, you, you received thousands of mails regarding it. Thank you. Why no book after that? Last, you and me spoke 10 years back. Uh -huh. You told me something you were writing or researching on Saturn moon or you were, you were going to write something on that. I forget that now. You know, yes. So why no book? Oh, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> Do you want to spill the beans here? I'm sorry. No, 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 not yet. Not yet. No, please, please. I want to be able to say, okay, I'm going to publish another book before that book, just in case. <laughs> um, but what I did was, I the second book has to, in a chart. Your first book is the sun. Your second book is moon. Oh. So my, my moon is joined Saturn. So my second book has to be about that topic. All right. Okay. But I have a Parivartan between Sun and Mars. So my first book would be reprinted or republished or something like that. So I actually made a second edition of the same book. Okay. And then 
what uh, then when I did that, Kantakshani showed up. And so I left everything when it comes to writing, dropped and said, wait until he's done. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you do during Kantakshani will carry Saturn with it. Okay. You move into a new place, Saturn will follow you there. You get a job at that time, Saturn will follow you there. So if you start something during Kantak Shani, it won't leave you even after the Kantak Shani is over. So I didn't want to write the book, who, which will never leave me. All right? So there is a reason I'm waiting. I did do some, I did make a major work, write written work, but it was not published for good reason. It was the same Kantak Shani. Um, so I'm waiting for the right transits. Oh, fantastic. Yes. And, and, and okay, let's, uh, let's come to one more thing. You know, uh, how, how do you, I mean, I, I, I want to share some incident with you. You know, uh, well, maybe I should just say, I have Scorpio ascended and Saturn is in Scorpio, the context shining. So if people are wondering, I'm sorry, go on. Okay. I still remember, I had only asked you one or two predictions. Mm -hmm. I was jobless for two years. Mm -hmm. You have told me this particular week, you'll get a job. Mm -hmm. I still remember you were hundred percent correct. Yeah. In and fact, in fact, remember, I, I, even, I remember that too. And I told you first, you got, you got a job offer. You rejected when this Tasha comes, you will get the same job offer and you will take it. Hundred, You have brilliant memory. Exactly true. And that is how it happened. Now I remember, you, you said, I remember, I, oh my God, you got a brilliant memory. <laughs> I become old, you become younger and younger. <laughs> but I remember good predictions too. I mean, you've been right. You, 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 how, how have you handled fame? You know, handling fame is at such a young age, you, you have been christened as the genius of astrology. I mean, of course, Sanjay Ji identified you, gave you everything. I mean, he gave you all the love and knowledge. But have you handled fame? I mean, has it been a tough journey? No, no, no. I, I, uh, I don't consider myself famous. That's how you handle fame, first. And uh, <laughs> smart. Um, I don't consider myself famous, and I don't take myself too seriously. I'm very dedicated to the subject. I, my first focus is the subject. It's, uh, I, it is not me who's the focus. The subject is the focus. If I do wrong to the subject, I'm doing injustice to myself. If I do right to the subject, I'm doing justice to myself and to my life purpose. Um, and uh, the only reason I have such, such uh, humble thoughts when sun is in ascendant and <laughs> all such other strong Lagna combinations are there is because from a very early time, my Guruji pushed me through various sadhanas to ensure that I would have my head on straight. And uh, all, uh, all thanks to him, I can at least say that all throughout this, I am dedicated to the right things in life. Um, it, I, people do come by and, 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 and suddenly say, oh my God, you are Visti Larsen, and they're surprised. And, uh, and I don't take it seriously. Uh, I, I show them who I am, and uh, they realize I'm only a human being, uh, a young human being still. And uh, they, they appreciate my knowledge, and they, they appreciate how I approach the knowledge. They, they know I like to ask questions and I question everything when it comes to knowledge so that I get the proper principles right. And, um, and, and people see me as a very dedicated student. And uh, that, 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 has, uh, that has been very nice for my reputation around people. They realize, yes, he has knowledge and, uh, and uh, he doesn't make any fuss about it. You know, no big fuss. And, and he shares it willingly, quickly, yes. freely. Yes. And yes. supports the rest of us who, who don't quite have your clarity. <laughs> it, it, there's a good reason for that also. You know, you may call me uh, uh, scrupulous. <laughs> you ask me questions, which I didn't ask yet. <laughs> but I always all have to study that. <laughs> yes. Thing, regarding something as basic as panchan, mm -hmm. you're going to teach us today. Oh. And I want Phyllis and you to, Phyllis, you can lead the show. And I know people are dying to know your knowledge, especially the young ones, you know, and what's happening with YouTube channels are, they are mainly fluffy channels, you know, 
they're very fluffy channels, more on the showbiz part or on a very superficial level. But today I want people to realize, you know, as something as basic as a panchan, what Vishti Larson can do. The show is all yours, sir. Thank you very much. I will start sharing my slides for the session today. And uh, here we go. Yeah. And uh, as you can see here, this is the first slide. Um, in fact, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not a bit new to this system that we're using today. Hold on. If I just do this. Yeah, you just need to click on slide. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Exactly. Perfect. So, so the topic, like uh, as, uh, as Sunil has mentioned, uh, that I wish to share today is an aspect of Panchanga. Panchanga is huge. And uh, when I was first asked by, the, by uh, Sunil and Phyllis as to which, which topic I wish, wish to speak on, um, my, uh, my desire was to show something that not everybody shows, that not everybody speaks about, that very few mention, but is a serious tool used by traditional astrologers. Traditional Jyotishas use this, have, have no doubt about that. And I wanted to pick up a topic which was spoken little about. So I wanted to speak about an aspect of Panchanga called Vikarana. Now, for those who are not familiar with Panchanga, Panchanga or the Panchanga, as I've spelt it here, which is the appropriate way, is what we call loosely the Vedic calendar. Mm -hmm. When you pick up the calendar to know when is the nakshatra, when is the titi showing up, then that calendar is called Panchanga. And it has other aspects to it other than Titi, which is the lunar day, or Nakshatra, which is the constellation or star. It has various parts, but the essential parts are five. Hence the name Pancha, which means five, and Anga, which means limbs. Now, when I open the next slide, mm -hmm. which you'll see here, you'll actually see Panchanga equals five limbs, and the five limbs, which are part of the Vedic calendar. Now, I've done some work for you. I'm not just listing the five limbs. I'm also telling you how they work, what to do with them, how they're used. So we have these five limbs of the, of the calendar, and they are based on the five elements. Now, people usually continue after this and tell you about various parts of the Panchanga. Let me stop right there. Firstly, there are five. These are the weekday. We call it Vara or its long Vedic name, Vasara. Okay, Vasara. Vasara. Yes, that's the long Vedic name. Okay. Why, why Vasara? Vasa means to abide, to sit in, to rest in actually. And Ra is the fire which rests in this planet. So Ra means Agni, like Ra is the sun god in Egypt. So Ra is Agni. Okay, it's the sound of fire. If you want to worship Agni, you can simply say Ram, Ram. That's a, the most essential worship of fire. All right, and when you make it long, it comes Ram, whom we know. Ram is the avatar of, Vish of Vishnu. All right. right, so the short Ram is fire, and the one who rests in fire, or sorry, not rests in fire, the, the, the fire who rests on this planet, that is Agni or fire. And the, and the way he manifests in this planet is through one of the weekdays. So the weekday we are born on tells us where the fire is in our life. Oh. Where is the... Oh, a fire is only important to us when we understand it as energy. So the amount of energy we have is coming from the weekday planet we are born on. Now, everybody will be born on the same week... Uh, will be born on the same weekday. There are only seven to choose from. So there are 70 types of people on this planet. But because you have an ascendant in your chart, planet will be differently placed for each individual all right so at least within a certain hour span let's say two hours that weekday will be differently placed for that individual all right yeah. and with that information just by knowing that one planet in your chart based on the weekday you're born on we can know a lot we can know how your body is going to look how is it built what's the frame of your body for example, are you a tall person, short person? Uh, are you, uh, do you have a lot of weight? Are you slim? Do you have a lot of energy? Do you get tired easily? Do you wake up easily? 
Are you a person who doesn't wake up until after lunch? You know, we can see this with the weekday planet. Only we with the weekday planet. All we this is possible. See. All this is possible. To some extent, we will examine the person's longevity. When, how much energy do you have before your body starts giving up? The one weekday planet will decide that. But the essence of him is he is energy. He gives energy. So he also will give something else. Because he gives energy, he gives the energy to work. Who are those who can spend long hours working? So with the same planet, I'm deciding the person's health, appearance, and as well, they're, they're, to some extent, how much energy they have for their profession and career. Who are those who can do well in their career? Those who have lots of energy. If you don't have energy, how will you go to work to do it? Right? Yeah. So the energy is just coming from that one planet. Why is this useful? Some people say the charts look the same if they go from one day to the other, right? Only the moon is changing nakshatras or titis. Sometimes you can get the same ascendant day after. Same planetary positions. Everything looks the same. But the weekday has changed. Yeah. Everything has changed. Because this also will give you the energy to work, we can go one step further. And I can tell you that this weekday planet will decide whether you will have a fortunate life or not. Ooh. The Indian concept of Raj Yoga will be decided by this planet. Oh my God. If the sun is the sunlight, the, that flame that is carried by it is the weekday planet. Okay? That flame of energy in the chart. Okay. As astrologers, I would then, if I was teaching this weekday planet, I would say, after seeing the weekday, see the Hora Lord. That's the hour that you're born in. The Hora, Kal Hora, it's called Kal Hora. Not Kal, but Kal Hora. The hour of birth. Some people believe Hora is a Greek concept. I will not say no. I will not say yes. But we do have a real use of it in the, in the Vedic astrology. That planet loading that hour. Because there's a planet loading it. It's not just an hour. There's a planet loading that hour. Right. That will tell us, oh, you had a weekday that had the energy. How to know where that energy is being put? The hour lord will tell you, the hora lord in the chat. Okay, so, so the hora lord, the yes. hora lord shows you the energy of the weekday, how it and where it is being put. Am I right? Exactly, exactly. You've got the energy from the weekday lord. Where are you, what are you going to do with it? The hora lord. For example, I'm born on a Friday. So all my energy is going to Venus, okay? It's very good for me to get the blessings of Venus in my life. That means actually that ladies will help me a lot in my life, all right? So when I say a lady came to class and taught me, taught me what Ascendant was, that spark, that energy spark, that flame that came was Venus, okay. all right? So Venus, my Friday birth, was blessing me. A lady came and gave that spark. For me, it's very good to marry because Venus is my spark. All right. Now, where is that spark being placed? My Hora Lord is the moon and it is in the 11th house. We say the 11th house is the study of Jyotish or of any occult subject because it's the fourth education to the eighth house. Okay. So where is your Hora Lord? That is where you're putting all your energy. So my energy is put in my 11th house. Okay. My Hora Lord. So when you read this, you have a, what we call a flow of information. One is the weekday law. And then because you've seen the weekday law, you have to see the horror law. Because you saw the horror law, maybe you have to see something else. So like that, this is a flow of information we get just from one limb. Okay? So let, 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 let me just, just, no, sorry to interrupt. 11th house. 11th house, I still remember SJC Sanjeeji's teaching. If the Atma Karaka is placed in the 11th house, it makes one a great astrologer. But Dedicated. Other, sorry? You're dedicated to the subject of astrology. Yes. The other logic is it is eighth from fourth. Yes. Okay. Is there any yes. other logic beyond that? Eleventh house is, we say, the place where the guru sits. Have you ever heard that? No. 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 It could be a bit new concept because most people say that ninth house is guru, which is not wrong. But you see, the place where the guru is sitting is the eleventh house. Okay. Because the guru from there will teach. What is that the guru is teaching? Upadesh. 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 Third okay. from ninth. Third from the ninth is the actual place where the Upadesh is being shared by the guru. The, then from there, the mantra of that 11th house guru comes to the third house. 
where we say, Guru Upadesha comes to us in the third house. Okay? So we are the recipients in the third house of the Guru Upadesha. But the 11th house is actually where the Guru sits. So people with, who are very spiritual will have strong connections to their 11th house. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Fantastic. The most, yes, the most essential point is this is the fourth, which is education, to the eighth, of course. Yes. 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 Please continue. Please continue. Fantastic. Now, the other limbs of the Panchanga. You, have, you know what the weekday is, and I, liked, I wanted to share a bit because the weekday is something we can easily look up. As Western astrologers would also want to understand this aspect of the chart. The Titi Lord is a very Vedic concept, right? It, um, you have all heard of, the, of the, the, those from India have no, know of the word Atiti, you know, okay. the guest. 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 Whom, whom you are, who, whom is supposed to be like a representative of God. Right. Okay, the guest is a, repre represents God who has come, right? And uh, there's a good reason for that. But let me stick to the Panchanga aspect to it. The Titi Lord is the separation between the sun and the moon. And with this information that the sun and moon have separated, we divide the month into 30 parts. And these become 30 lunar days. So for each, and to get 360 degrees divided into 30 parts, we need to each day to be 12 degrees each. Now, we, let's not focus on whether it's an actual day or not. But the separation of the moon from the sun every 12 degrees is representing how much the moon, which is representing, you could say, the mind, has gone away from the sun, which is the soul. How much separation has occurred? How much is our mind linked to our soul? That's all based on the sun-moon relationship. Now, the, why we would a attribute a concept such as the moon and the sun to concepts such as that of, of, our, of our soul and how our, what we're doing here in this world or planet is a very, what we call, a concept which is related to the emotions. It's an emotional concept. Mm -hmm. it's, it's where we look at the person as not being a soul, but more like a spirit. All right? There's a big difference. It's not, it's not necessarily somebody who is a, what we call I'm sorry, I think somebody shared something in the chat window. What's that about? Oh, okay. Um, yes, yes, that's right. So I was just saying that the soul uh, as a spirit is what we're speaking of here. All right? Now, what, just to step away from the slides a little bit and talk about that. So when we speak of the soul from this concept, it means it is, it is no longer living in a heavenly abode. It's not up there in heaven anymore. It has come down and I've got a mind attached to it. It's stuck with the mind, if you will. And when this happens, it's forming a, a reason, a meaningful existence in this world. It's yet, not yet got the body, not necessarily, but it's forming a meaningful existence in this planet or wherever it is. Mm -hmm. So the soul and, and mind come together like a spirit and move through this world, this, this, this existence, whichever it is. And what is meaningful, what gives meaning to life is to seek something. Okay. So, so the titi is showing what we are seeking. The titi is showing what we are seeking. Yes. Okay. It shows why you have come to this planet, a desire you wish to have fulfilled. Like kind of a purpose of life. That's right. Okay. All right. And the, and the, the, the Vedic seers thought this as a completely, uh, as a very important concept, as a, as a concept which overrides most of other aspects of the Panchanga. Because they started casting birth charts, again, every annual chart based on the reoccurrence of the Tithi. Right. This was so important because they could see with the person every year how they come closer to achieving their desire. Right, right, right. Right. Because thank you. Thank you for that. So the existence on this planet becomes profoundly important from the concept of Titi. Profoundly. Okay. And 
when you realize that it has a lot to do with our emotions, mm -hmm. how we feel that we have done something in this planet or not done something, when you realize that, you can take it one step further and say, well, how are my emotions in relationships? How are my relationships going in this planet? Mm -hmm. And this could be relationships with anybody. And then go one step further and say, well, the most emotional aspect of my life is my relationship with my spouse or my partner in any form. So we take it one step further and say, well, let's use it for something practical. Not everybody wants to know whether their sole purpose is being achieved. Funnily, they don't want to know. <laughs> but they do want to know how their marriage is going. Yeah. The TT Lord will tell us that. Okay. The TT will tell us that. Let me give you a small thing. Sure. The Titi Lord is a, can, a, has to be represented as a planet, just as the weekday Lord. Okay? So we have 30 planets. Actually, we boil them down to eight and say eight planets repeat. Mm -hmm. So we have a scheme for that. That's for another lecture. But whichever Titi Lord you have is a watery element. But that planet who has become the Titi Lord is now your water in your chart. Oh. Suddenly, you may be looking at Venus, but that's suddenly, uh, sorry, you may be looking at Mars to give a proper example. You think, oh, he's full of fire. But if you're born on the third or 11th Titi, he is the water in your chart. He's carrying the water. Oh my God. And that then causes an inherent problem also, because the one planet who holds all the fire is not holding the water. Okay. During his Dasha period, your spouse may leave you for reasons you cannot understand. Oh my God. Just that small bit of information, people will not be able to catch, okay? Similarly, the planet holding all the fire was the weekday Lord, right? Have you ever seen a chart where Venus Dasha caused divorce? Yes. It can happen, right? Yeah. Yes. And sometimes you've wondered, maybe it was the, Venus was the seventh Lord in that chart and divorce happened. Yeah. And you'd wonder, why, why is it the seventh Lord, Venus, the one planet responsible for giving you a relationship who's causing divorce. Yeah. See if the person is born on a Friday. Because that's the fire in the chart. Uh, yeah. The fire is causing the opposite of water. Okay. And the water causes the opposite of fire. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's a small thing. Very important. Now, to come back to the lunar day, Titi Lord. Because I'm mixing here a little bit, aren't I? First, I talked about Titi Lord, went back to weekday Lord, and I'm coming back to Titi Lord. But it, it, these concepts are quite prime. Take the Titi Lord. He's full of water. During his Dasha period, use Vimshotri, the Vimshotri Dasha we all know. During his Dasha period, you can get married. But if he's in a fiery sign, like Aries or Leo or Sagittarius, or joined fiery planets or combust, that mm -hmm. same Dasha period, will cause you for some reason or the other to be separated by, from your spouse. May not be an argument that that person suddenly just starts traveling. Hmm. Okay? okay? The sound is not here. I'm sorry? The sound that I am getting uh -huh. is fading. I'm still here. Can you hear me still? Yeah, I, I can. Uh, but uh, um, Phyllis, it's been on and off right from the start of the interview. But it's okay. Yeah. Uh, I would just request okay. Vishti to be a bit more loud. That's it. All right. One second. It may be. And uh, hold on. It could be an issue at my end. My mistake. And uh, I'm trying to adjust my audio options because I think it's adjusting my microphone volume automatically. Mm -hmm. That could be. Yes, it's a waving in and out. Yeah. What you're saying is so precious. We want everyone to hear it. With they're going to have enough questions without wondering what you said. Sure. So let me just do that. And do you get stable sound now? There's no up and down right now, is now there? Now it seems good. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. I changed it. That's it's all. It should be fine now. Sorry good. for that. So hey, there's no problem. I was just saying, as the last thing that the state of the planet which is loading your lunar day will mm -hmm. decide how much of water is kept inside the relationship. And if it becomes too, if it gets overheated by the sign it's placed in or the planets it's joined, then the, pa pe the period of the Titi Lord can cause separation. 
But if it has lots of water, it's joined watery planets, then it encourages relationships. Okay? okay? okay. Yes. And it sure. encourages relationships with the people you've already made the relationship with. Oh. Okay? okay. It's also an important concept. <laughs> so basically, Tithi, the element is Jala, water. That's right. That's right. That's okay. right. Perfect. Let me go back to the screen, or the, the slide, okay. and uh, add a few more things. Sure. And now, we, we reach the Tithi. Now, the Karana. The karana is half of that lunar day. Now, when people ask me, why did this one become half of the lunar day? Like we had a lunar day and there are 12, sorry, there are 12 degrees each, 30 in a month, so 12 each. And, uh, and uh, then half of this, six degrees, becomes a karana. Now, what this is showing is, is our, is they, they say it relates to our career and wealth. Okay? We have to get the concept right. It's the earth element. Mm-hmm. Now, all these, the Tithi and the Karana, are based on the sun and moon, okay? The Nakshatra is also based on the moon. You, that's also a very important concept. The moon will function three aspects of the Panchanga, all right? When we look at yoga, it also impacts it. It has a big impact on the yoga calculation. So these four, after the weekday, are solely lunar in their concept, at least in their calculation. Mm -hmm. All right. How best, therefore, to describe what these are? Why are they all related to the moon? The best way to describe this is to start with the nakshatra. Think of the nakshatra as a tree. Okay, a tree standing somewhere. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, this tree, you need to water it. The quality of the water you're pouring on this tree is your tithi. Okay, and everybody knows the type of water you put on, pour on the tree will also decide the fruits. The quality of the water will decide the fruits of that tree. That quality of the water, which is giving the nutrition, the nourishment, you could even say people put some people put some type of fertilizer on that on the soil of that tree. That mm -hmm. is the karana. Oh, yes. The yoga is how well this tree is doing with its surroundings. If there are too many other plants around, maybe usurping its nourishment. That is the yoga, which can cause the tree to feel as if it has to go somewhere else. You may need to uproot the tree and plant it somewhere else. That's decided by the yoga. How does that work in actual life? Your yoga will decide whether you will stay in your birth country or not. Oh my God. That yoga will decide whether you will marry within your community or not. Okay. okay, where you will you work in your community or not, or maybe you have to take a job which is outside the community, but you can still live in the same country. Okay, so the yoga decides our link to everything. All right, it's actually everything we say. It's the most important concept we say. Now, when we look at the nakshatra in a person's birth chart, one of the prime things people will say about the nakshatra is you can see how the person's intelligence is going to work. They say that actually, because you are going to see the theme of a person's life. If a person has moon in Barani, relationships are a huge topic. Mother is a huge topic. Actually, I should be more straight and say women are a huge topic for Barani nakshatra. Okay. For moon in, let's say, Ashwini nakshatra, health is a very big topic. Kritika nakshatra, knowledge is a very big topic. Learning, getting the right teacher, mentors, guidance. Okay, so each nakshatra is a big topic, a theme of our life, and even the, it affects the way we approach the world. It affects the way we look at people, the nakshatra of the moon. So maybe it's not appropriate to call it intelligence, but it is the mind who, which is functioning on our behalf in a way. Okay, it gives us the thoughts, the framework for our thoughts. So the nakshatra is telling us how our mind works. Now, Parashara says something. He says, if your moon is in uh, Kritika, you may treat your spouse very badly. He says that, okay? Mm -hmm. Provided the tithi is also a negative. Achha. And the weekday as well. So that's the secret part. No, he says that also. Okay. He says all three. You need nakshatra and kritika, moon and kritika. He mentions three actually. Kritika, ashlesha, and uh, satabishaj. 
Okay, he mentions these. And then he says, then you need a certain titi and you need a certain weekday to be born on. Then you will treat your spouse like socks. You'll change them like socks also. That's his statement. So we have to understand, why does he say that? That's an odd statement. Why does he need all three also? They would have to do with separate things. See, the weekday shows whom we will benefit from and how we'll benefit from them. Okay. So depending on your weekday, you could cause ill to somebody else and benefit. Your nakshatra will tell you, what is your guiding intelligence? But the water which feeds that, um, the, um, the, that, in, that intelligence is the titi, your emotions. What is your emotional makeup? How do you feel about treating other people? Okay? Do you feel it's okay to hit people? Your titi will tell us. Do you feel it's okay to shout at people? Your titi will tell us. Okay? I call it, to what extent you are numb towards the world? All right? What is your culture? If, say, a country is having a very bad titi, mm -hmm. let's say a country is born with a very bad titi, the country is established with a, with a very bad titi, the people in that country will, little by little, become extremely uncultured. <laughs> little by little, the entire country will become very uncultured. Okay? And especially one thing that will happen is, violence towards women will, become, will rise when a bad titi is there in a country. Okay. Because your culture decides to which extent you accept that we live in a civilized world. Okay. So your individual titi tells you how, what do you think is okay to do to other people. Give a simple thing, a simple thing. If you're born on a rikta titi, rikta titi means you're born either on the fourth titi or the ninth titi or the fourteenth titi. On either half, whether it's the waning or waxing part of the month. So, so those are called rikta. They're considered very negative for relationships. They say don't marry during this time. Why? Because you will ha not have a need to seek love in your partner. Really? So don't marry during that time. Now, the big question, what if you're born at that time? You will not have a need to seek love from anyone. Forget partner. Okay. These are people who can go through life and they, they little by little do, uh, feel that it's not good for them to be part of the world because they don't like the world. They're not getting enough from them. They are fine sitting in their own cave. We call it cave. They call it office, closed office space, home office, not going outside and working from there because their titi is telling them we don't need the others. We have enough love for ourselves. We do not need to seek love outside. So the titi is so important and we need to remedy that in charts. Okay. If a person does not feel love for a partner, it's coming from the titi. Okay. Mind so blowing. that's one small thing. Mind blowing. Karana Thank is the fruits of all our labor. It's the fruits of our seeking the desires that we want. Okay. It's our ability to hoard assets in this life, to keep things with us. And this is one topic that I wish to touch upon today. Do not consider it lightly. It's a very important topic because it'll define careers for people. That's the most astonishing part. I, I, I don't think that anybody knows this knowledge. This, this is brand new, Visti. Well, uh, that's true. why I like to te teach this. this. <laughs> That's why it's thrilling to speak uh, on this topic to people. So, so I look forward to uh, guiding you through uh, our first step into Karana today. All right. Should I go to the next slide? <clears throat> Certainly. Yes. Whenever you're ready, you do what you want to do. My pleasure. <clears throat> now, let me see here. Now, on the next slide, is this? Yes, this is the next slide. So on the next slide, I have described the, uh, not described, but I have indicated what, which are the 11 karana, okay? Actually, I should more appropriately call this, technically, this is called karanesha, okay? Karanesha means the Lord of karana, okay? And uh, this slide is more dedicated to that topic. But the, I, here are the 11 karana. Um, they, these 11 
function at, uh, at different times of the month, all right? And uh, they function for just about half a day, all right? So if you have 24 hours in a day, 12 hours of The second one is Balava. The third is Kaulava. People know this name. They say, oh, that means a trader, a merchant, could even be a weaver, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's a hint here. These are professions they indicated. Your car the name of the Karana can indicate your profession, all right? Now, the seventh one is Vishti. No, nothing to do with my name. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I'm born on Vishti Karana, interestingly. Okay. Now, the eighth one is called Shakuni. Now, it's important to say that the the first seven are what we call chara karana. Chara means moving. They're moving and they, and they change. They're not the same. All right? Uh, even that's misleading. But if you notice next to those seven on the far right, you will see that these seven occur many times in right. a month. Right. All right? Now, the last four do not occur more than once mm -hmm. in a month. Okay. The eighth one is called shakuni. Shakuni karana is the second half of what we call the 14th lunar day in the dark fortnight. So this is essentially the time just before the new moon. This is an ominous time. This is the time just before the dark is starting. Okay? The, the, the new moon is the, is the time of absolute darkness. It's the, when we have a, lunar, sorry, a, a solar conjunction, the, this new moon indicates the eclipse, solar eclipse. The sun and moon are joined. So this time is the absolute darkness of the moon, the time when the mind is going completely dark. These are the worst times to be born, we say, okay? What does that mean? Because we talked about lunar day earlier, right? Titi. So it is the time when the mind is most numb. Mm -hmm. You are least, as outwardly, you are least cultured, okay? You are least disposed towards emotional input from others mm -hmm. right some people will say this is like being drunk because you're emotionally numb you are not in contact with your senses in such a way where you can be properly responding to other people's emotions you are not sensitive to other people's emotions and so also the fruits of your labor will be in darkness okay. so shakuni which is, the, which is the first of the dark karanas, is, is the number 58. It's the 58th karana in the month. Okay? Nagava is the 59th. And he's loaded by Ketu. You'll see Rahu loads Shakuni, Ketu loads Nagava. Chatushpada is the darkest time. It's Amavasya, deep dark Amavasya, the second half of Amavasya, the darkest, the lunar new moon, the second half of the new moon. Okay, just before it becomes full, a complete new moon. This mm -hmm. is the darkest time. It's loaded by Rahu. And the one which arises just after, where the moon is still not visible, which is called Kinstugna, loaded by Ketu. How do you pronounce it? Kinstugna. Kinstugna. Yes. Yes. Now, the, what we have to learn from these are the planetary lords of this state. Okay? Because... If I tell you that you will be a merchant or trader with Vanija Karana, I'm not doing justice to your chart. All right? What I am learning is that Vanija has to do with Venus. And I have to see Venus in the charts to understand the person's profession. Okay. All right? So the planet, the Karanas are giving planetary lordships which decide the profession. Okay? And notice that the darkest have the nodes as the lords. The darkest have the nodes, the rest have the seven planets. Right, right. Now there are 11 of these karana, and they relate to the 11 rudras. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the relationship.
okay? Okay. So he's sorry. keeping us here. And they say he rides on a big elephant. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you, got, uh, you wanted to ask something? No, my connection was lost for a second. It's okay, continue. I'll, I'll gather I it. Just saying, I was just saying that Rudra rides on a big elephant. Okay? okay? And he, this big elephant is holding a chain. And this chain is, is a part of our life. Okay? okay? One part of our life. There are 11 such chains. In the chart, one of them holds our longevity, the other holds our spouse's longevity, another holds our mother's longevity, another holds our father's longevity, another is keeping us connected to this to our job, another is keeping us connected to our kids. So many things that these rudras are doing for us, but we only call them rudra when we cry when they leave. Hmm. So the rudra, which is important for us, will be based on our karana. And that is for people to study. I'm not leaving the list. <laughs> Deliberately, that's deliberate. Rudra is, not a, Rudra is not a concept you want to give easily to people. There are many restrictions associated with its worship, with the Rudra worship. Mm -hmm. All right. With knowing the 11 Karana and the Lords, we should know how to calculate it. Now, nobody likes calculations. Well, I'm sorry, I like calculations. <laughs> but because you can learn so much from calculations, and I've given the steps to find the karana. If you have a software, a decent good software, there are many nice softwares. Uh, Jagannath Hora is a very nice software for doing charts. And you will get the karana uh, indicated and the planet indicated. I will say though, there's only uh, one thing about uh, Jagannath Hora. It won't give you the karana if you're born in those last four. Oh, you got the last four? Then there's a different concept used in that software where he doesn't take the uh, Narsi Maral, the author, will take not Rahu Ketu, but he will take one of the four lords of your quadrants in your chart. So my advice, just check the name and then take this planet, Rahu or Ketu, for the purposes that we're using today. Okay? Okay. Now the essence of this calculation I've given here in this slide is, is going to be the same if we're doing Titi calculation, but it's, the main point is, Finding the karana, which number is the karana, and I gave some easy ways to find it based on the number. Mm -hmm. so we'll do ample for you. Those who want can study this. This is the time when you pause your YouTube video and say, okay, let me just read what Visti said in case I can use this for something. Okay, maybe he hid something in here I don't know about. So that's, that's the time when you do this to check what did Visti do. Okay, so this is there for people to look at. Yeah. Now, let me go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. Now some concepts. Mm -hmm. Karana and Bhudevi. Bhudevi is a, is a Vedic concept. She is the mother of the earth. Okay? Mother of the earth. And uh, this is a prime concept within Panchanga, what I'm going to speak of. Panchanga, if we divorce it from the chart, is like a capability we have. We're realizing that. It's a capability we have. It's given to us. And the chart is in the sky. The planets are in the sky, right? Aren't hmm. they? They're not here on earth. In the sky. But here on this earth, we can calculate the weekday. We know how many, if it's rotated once, one weekday has passed. Rotated twice, another weekday has passed. So when we compare Panchanga as a calendar to the charts in the sky, What's happening is that the charts in the sky are what we call nabas. They are in, in the heaven, in the sky. And, and what, what they are showing is a possibility, potentiality. Okay. Our ability to reach that potential is coming from our calendar. When we say the weekday shows energy, it is my energy to go like a rocket up to the sky and take advantage of some yogas there. Okay. Without the panchanga, you cannot take advantage of the chart. Okay. okay? Powerful, powerful. So the karana is indicating our ability to, to study, accumulate, and work. If I may be so, so let's say, so frank, so, so, so. So small in my words, okay? It's our ability to hold on to the earth. 
It is the blessing of the earth mother to play with the toys that the world gives us. Okay? It's essentially you as a child waiting for the divine mother to give you another toy to play with. Today it's iPhone. Tomorrow it's, a, it's an iPad. The day after it's your TV. Okay? You got a laptop. You have a webcam. All right? All these are toys. The mother's giving you these toys. You ask for more and more toys every day. You haven't grown up actually. All you have done is exchange your toys for new toys. Okay? Every day it's new toys. So the, this karana is indicating the ability of yours to get more of these toys. Okay? And you have, you're forced to do some things to get those toys. You need a job. <laughs> or a business. Some source of income. You don't only need this. You also need to be good at keeping the money you get from these. Saving. All right? Hoarding is the right term. All right? Then you need, to, you need to accumulate objects in your life. Those objects you find necessary, like a car. More importantly, a home is very important. Without a home, you cannot really say that you have, a, you have acquired anything. All right? Home in this world is very important. A, a, basically a property in essence. And then you have other assets that you accumulate. All these are based on the karana, which is enabling you to have more toys to play with. Okay? So that is the blessing of the earth mother. Mm -hmm. And if that earth mother blesses you with the right, let's say, the right way of, of grabbing these toys, it means in essence, whether it is hit the right spot in the sky, catch the right rope in the sky, then, that, then when you pull down that rope from the sky, that planet that comes down with all its blessings will come down with it. Wow. Let us say this karana has shifted to a wrong place in the sky where there's very little to, for you to cash in. And when you pull down the rope, you get nothing. Okay? So, so these are our blessings on earth to pull ropes. And we have five ropes to pull on. Okay? Correct. All right. So um, now I will give a principle. If the lord of the karana, which are these planets is in an airy sign, Gemini, Aquarius, or Libra, its dasha will not be nice. It will be miserable. Okay? Because of air. Okay. All right? What is this mix of air and earth? Air, earth and water is good because the earth gets more moist and it can actually be reformed. In a nice way. This is the blessing of the mother. You can reform your toys, new toys, new shapes. All right? But what does wind do? It blows the earth away. It dries it. Okay? Mm. What can fire do? Fire can even consider breaking your toys. But air is the way, biggest problem. So what is the mix between air and earth? What, do, what would be an appropriate way of calling this? Is this a type of a tornado? Would it be right to say? Mm. This is tornado combination. So if you have your Karana Lord, the Karanesha, in an airy sign, that means you have a tornado in your life. And when that tornado comes, just like a tornado picking up a house or picking up a, a place of stay or a car, so also your assets will be taken away. Okay. Okay? If this Karana Lord is also Nakshatra Lord, keep in mind, some of these plants can mix. The nakshatra also shows air, if you remember the previous slide. It also is representing air. Then also, this problem is arising. Okay. Okay. This is again, wind hitting the assets. Tornado. Easy to remember? Think tornado. Okay. Somebody might correct me if it's a right, appropriate term, tornado. We need appropriate names for these yogas. So feel free on YouTube. All right. Best is if the Karana Lord is in an earth sign. Okay. Or joined earthy planets, right? <coughs> Mercury is an earthy planet. So if this Karana Lord has joined Mercury, this is also very nice. Okay. That's, that's because the Tatwa yes. of Karana is yeah. Budevi, earth. Exactly. Exactly. The earth element is good for Karana. 
Water element is also very good for Karana. In fact, it's very nice. Okay. Imagine a nice sweet moon Venus yoga with your Karana. Wow. Wow. That is wealth. Okay. But it keeps forming in new ways. It's changeable. Very changeable. What do you not want with your Karana? Ketu. You okay. don't want him. You don't want Saturn or Rahu either. But Ketu can break the wealth into many pieces. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, you were going to ask something? Yes, you have mentioned about airy sign, earth sign, water sign, but fiery signs you have not mentioned here. That's because it's not the worst. <laughs> we have the best, which is its own, which is earth. The second best, which is water. The worst, which is air. And, the, and what is considered neither good nor bad is fire. Okay. okay? Okay. You can still deal with fire. Fire is a problem, but you can still deal with it. Okay? okay. Like that. Okay. Now, <clears throat> that's an easy concept, this. Yeah. I don't think I even have given examples, but since we have examples, we might touch upon this. Sure. And then we get to one of the first topics. Now, uh, <clears throat> Before we even talk about education as is listed on this slide, you see that nice chart in the middle? Yes. yes. This is what I call my standard chart for, no, for remembering Karana. Okay? Okay. Now, this is an East Indian chart. Uh, my favorite chart. If anybody asks, my favorite chart is East Indian. Okay. It properly incorporates diagonal lines and horizontal vertical lines. It's a mix of intuition and logic. Perfect. Perfect. So those who need to really do well in Jyotish, they need one of these charts. You know? So make it a habit, those of you are studying, learn this, you, it'll do a lot of good to you. But anyway, so um, now you'll see that in this East Indian chart, I put some, uh, there are 12 signs and you will see that they are, that in some of these signs, I put some indicators. You see that lightning bolt? That's the 10th house, okay? <laughs> Now, if you see that, that means that the topmost house, the, the, that means the one in the, the middle, topmost uh, house, that is Aries. Okay? But for ease, for ease, I will just say it's first house for now. Then you will see the plus sign is in the third house. Right. Okay? So third house has a plus sign. So yes. third house uh, is there. Then fourth house comes next. There is a manuscript being opened. 4,000 is about education, right? Yeah. So manuscripts are being opened. I like to open manuscripts. You know, Saptarishi manuscripts are very good. Thank you. And uh, the sixth house is having a Pac-Man sort of thing. For those, I, I, actually, it's a pie. It's supposed to be a pie, but I thought it looked like Pac-Man, and I thought it appropriate for this. A very open-winded Pac-Man, uh, because he's eating a lot of cheese over there in the sixth house. Okay. Now I'll explain what all these houses mean. These, if you notice, the third and sixth are the natural signs of Mercury. Right? Yes. yes. The Karana Lord is very important in Mercury signs. Okay. The fourth house is education. We know Mercury has to do with education. Yes? For studying. You need books to study, right? Education. And Mercury indicates that. And finally, the 10th house has a lightning bolt. This is because this is where the deciding factor of our career is, the 10th house. The mm -hmm. Karana Lord has to be seen from all these four houses. Okay. On this slide, we are going to talk of education, that manuscript. Okay. Very simply put, we are going to study education now. Okay. And I, in, this, in this series on education, there's more series, but in this series on education that will come up, I will reflect on the third house because some of the charts have some strong third house connections. Okay. So just keep that in mind as we talk. All right. Now, the principles for examining education. Treat the fourth house as the ascendant, Lagna. <clears throat> From there, see where the Karana Lord is placed. Okay. So, you're, so instead of seeing a first house as Lagna, you look at fourth house and say, this is now the ascendant of the chart. And then you count from there to where the Karana Lord is. Okay? And based on that, you know 
whether something good or bad is happening in education. Which are the good houses? The quadrants, one, four, seven, ten, and the trines, five and nine, corner. Mm -hmm. Second house, maybe it'll be good, maybe it won't. Twelfth mm -hmm. house, usually not good. Which house, sorry? Twelfth. Twelfth. Okay. What does that imply? That the current Lord is placed in third from the ascendant, which is twelfth from the fourth house. Okay. Eighth from the fourth house is the eleventh house. This is only good if you're going to study Jyotish or something, but it's not that good for education. Okay. All right. Go figure. My Karana Lord, Karanesha, is Saturn. He's placed in the 11th house. He's not that good for education. If you teach Visti Jyotish during his high school studies, he will not study in high school. <laughs> All right? Not that good for him if he wants to focus on his education. All right? But if he is dedicated to studying Jyotish, they should have had Jyotish in high school. That's the solution. Now, <clears throat> <laughs> for all of us. Yeah. Sure. Now, the point here could be complicated for, new, for beginners, but it's actually very easy once you get a hang of it. If this current Lord is obstructed, so what does that mean? That means if you see from the fourth house, every house has an opposite house, like a scale. So if a planet is, let's say, in the 11th house from the ascendant, it's an eighth from the fourth house. Like in my case, I said, my Saturn is the current Lord. It's an eighth from my fourth house. All right. Firstly, you don't need anything, anybody to tell you that Visti will have a lot of changeability in his education. Eight houses changes, right? Many changes. Mm -hmm. I might start one education, say, no, it's not good enough. Start another education. All right. So that eighth house element is there. But what if there was a planet in the sixth from the fourth house? Remember the scale. Eighth and sixth, they're not opposite each other but they occupy houses on either side, yeah. opposite sides, if you will. If there's a planet in eight, a planet in sixth is on the other side of the scale. All right? Just as we said, second and 12 are two sides of the scale. We have three, 11. We have four and 10. We have five and nine. We have six and eight. Okay? So if I have a planet in the eighth from the fourth house and a planet in the sixth from the fourth house, they are actually fighting as to who is going to decide what's going to happen in Visti's education. All right? Right. Now, if the current Lord is in the eighth from the fourth, right. and I'm running the Dasha of a planet in the sixth from the fourth, Dasha, okay? Then that Dasha will dominate and say, hey, you current Lord over there in the eighth from the fourth, you get out for a little bit. I'm going to take, I'm going to ensure Visti doesn't study right now. Okay. And I was in the Dasha when I changed most of my education. Okay. Okay. So what's happening is if you have a planet on the other side of the scale, his Dasha will dominate and say, Oh, Karna Lord, get out. You will not finish your education properly. Okay. Not easily, not properly. First, you have to do what I want. That was that Dasha wanted something. Okay. So practically what happened was I was in, I have my Karana Lord Saturn, Vishni mm -hmm. Karana. He's in 11th house from the ascendant. That is eighth from the fourth house. In the sixth from the fourth house, I have Rahu. And that is my, that was mm -hmm. my Dasha. I was running Rahu Mahadasha during my education. All right. So what happened was I went through technical high school. And yes, I had decided to do that. I was not very interested in studying, firstly. So my grades were not that high. They were just average. Then I decided I wanted to be an engineer. I, I, my grades were not good enough. So I had to take some supplementary classes. I did not finish that properly. In fact, I felt cheated because some, just I had done well the entire preparation, but the exam, a question was given, which was a deciding question. And I felt my exam sheet was wrong. Oh my God. And I argued, I said, come on, this cannot be the right exam sheet. Give me a new one. Because I felt there's, there's, there's a mistake here. It cannot be this question. They wouldn't give me a new one. They even said it was correct. And then they told me answer. They didn't even want to show me the actual other exam sheet. They didn't want to show me a new one. Oh my God. I was sitting in the exam room thinking, what's going on? And then I wrote in my, my answer. 
I believe soon as I was done, we could see the results and also the right questions. Oh. And exactly as I had thought, there was an X where it was supposed to be, sorry, there was a Y where there was supposed to be an X in my exam sheet. Just one line missing decided my, my, the outcome of my exam. Literally, if you have a, an, an X, it's like that. You move a, remove a leg, you'll get a Y. That's exactly what was in my exam sheet. <laughs> oh my and I knew it was wrong. And I answered, this is wrong. What is it written in the exam sheet? And I answered what was in the exam sheet, claiming they was wrong. So, of course, all they'll tell me is you, could, you can't read, right? <laughs> but I knew it was wrong. That is what that planet did to me. Okay? okay? So, when I wanted to make an effort, then it obstructed me. So, I did not manage to study engineering. Then I took another education. Even that, I stopped halfway because I said, I'm tired of studying. I want to study Jyotish. And then I got to study Jyotish. You can only imagine the fright of my parents. Okay. All right? And, uh, and then after only studying Jyotish for a series of years, I came home and finished my education. Oh. So the planet wanted me to finish something first. It was my Atma Karaka, soul desire to finish that first. Once that soul desire had been fulfilled, I came back and was able to finish my studies. Okay. So that's the, that was the other side of the scale being heavier. No, that's I what I'm referring to in this example. Okay? Okay. Yes. If the Karana Lord lords the fourth house or has joined its Lord, good results will accrue from education. Also, if it's in the fourth house, the results are positive for education. Okay. Yes. And that is why in my case, I finished my studies. <laughs> my fourth Lord is Saturn, the Karana Lord. But during that Dasha, he was obstructed. Okay. So we're going to see some examples. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll walk straight into the examples. I've given uh, the Rashi and Navamsha of Bill Gates. Okay. And uh, some additional information is also listed in this chart, such as Panchanga. You'll see a very complicated table of Panchanga. In there, you might see where it says Karana, Taitila. Okay. Mm. And that is the one we want, we want to refer to. It'll say number five. Actually, it's number four. Okay. okay. It's supposed to be number four. It depends on how you count. If you say the first karana is kinstugna, then this is right number five. Okay. But if you say, no, no, we'll start from baba as the first one. Then this is number four. So it depends on how you count. Okay. And I also see, you'll see a dasha. Now this dasha I've selected specifically for Bill Gates' chart because I know how to select dasha. So I spe pick a specific one which works for his chart. And those who are students of Jyotish who have seen Bill Gates' chart before will say, Visti, I didn't know Bill Gates was Gemini ascendant. I thought it was cancer. Maybe I will be able to prove to you why it's Gemini in a minute and not cancer. Maybe. He is born on Taitila Karana. As you'll see on the left, I've given a nice right cut. Karanesha, that means the Lord of the Karana, becomes Mercury. So Mercury is the one which is deciding his education, his fortune, wealth, everything. Okay? <clears throat> now, let's look at that Mercury. <clears throat> he dropped out of Harvard in Buddha Dasha. Okay? He began in the same Buddha Dasha, dropped out in Buddha Dasha in the sub-period, Antadasha of the Moon. So somebody is supposed to say, how would he have dropped out during the Dasha of Mercury? Mercury is in the fourth house. He is the fourth Lord. He is supposed to ensure a good, solid education. All right? Good. Now, if you look, it was Moon's sub-period. Why did he drop out? He dropped out because he wanted to start his business. So working, right? He dropped out for working. So that means the 10th house has obstructed him. Is there a planet in the 10th house? Now, how does this scale work when it comes to planets in 4th and 10th? The planets in the 10th will obstruct the planets in the 4th. Okay? So which was the period when he, he dropped out? It was Mer Mercury 
main period, that's Buddha. And the sub-period was Chandra, the moon. If you look at his tenth house, he has moon over there. Mm. So during moon sub-period, he stopped studying and he went to work. Ten thousand is work, that's why he stopped. Easy, right? Mm. Very straightforward. How do I know that he will likely drop out? Any way that Mercury is joined Mars. If Mercury is joined Mars, you're not that keen on studying. All right? Unless it's programming or math. All right? Because the fire element is with Mars. So he will break something in, in Mercury, the earth element. And that he did. He is going to break something. Will he be unqualified to work because of this? No. Because the Karana Lord is still the fourth Lord in the fourth house. Mm -hmm. So he will be qualified despite dropping out early. Okay? He will be able to work. If conversely I make this ascendant cancer, mm -hmm then I do not see how he would drop out for the sake of work. See the dilemma? Because there would be nothing in the 10th house making him stopping his studies for work. Hmm. So the reason is coming from that. Just like in my case, the 9th house stopped me from finishing my studies, one part of it. 9th mm -hmm. house is higher specialization. So why do, what does it mean when a person is getting more specialized but is not studying? That's like going and studying something else. Okay. Yes. Guru stopping the education. No, Guru didn't tell me. He wanted me to continue. <laughs> but ninth house, higher specialization is stopping you from finishing education. Okay? But that specialization which will give you a job is ninth house. Okay. And my job is Jyotish. So that specialization paid off, right? He had his right. So similarly in his case, in Bill Gates' case, he is stopping because of work. He started working because of the 10th house. So the planet in the 10th house has to stop his education. I have other good reasons to, to think that he's Gemini ascendant. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You see the Karana Lord over there? Yeah. Normally, and you'll see in a few slides from now, people, if the Karana Lord is going to be in third house, which will be the case if his ascendant is Cancer, the Karana Lord will still be Mercury. Normally, they are extremely beautiful and they usually get into modeling. Can you come okay. again? Can you come again on that part? Normally, if this Karana Lord is in third house, which will be the case if he is Cancer Ascendant, right. then the person gets into modeling because they are very beautiful. Okay. Very, very beautiful. Very handsome, beautiful people. All right. Extremely attractive people okay. all right and you'll see in a few charts that is actually the case and right? you used dwadashtari dasha because the lagna is in uh, vinashan amsha um the parashara says this is technical view he says Shuk, if the lagna is in shukram shaka now <laughs> what does that mean do this the ascendant is if i take gemini is the ascendant right hmm. see, see gemini in the namamsha now, Gemini Navamsha, if it has Venus, use this Dasha. There you go. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Okay. So, like that. Now, if we look away from the Dasha, if somebody says, but Cancer Ascendant, we don't need to use this Dasha, what do we do, Venus, Misty? Then I'll say, look at the chart. Where's Karna placed? It's in the third house. What, if it's for Cancer Ascendant, it'll be in third house. How will he uh, be interested in doing anything related to computers for, for the first part? Because third house will give extreme attraction. It's Maituna Baba. Maituna means copulation. People will want to sleep with you. Literally, that is what they say. High level of attraction, right? You walk into a room, pheromones are being spotted 100 meters away by men, okay? Or women for that matter. Extremely attractive. He would have been a model. I haven't heard of any Gates calendar with modeling pictures of him yet. If that changes, if that comes up at any stage, then I will change his chart to Cancer. <laughs> Not quite likely. Not like, quite likely, that's right. Yes. Now, third house does give writing, people will argue. But when it comes to Karana Lord, he is not supporting necessarily that form of writing. He supports in the third house, physical attraction. Okay. In fact, I'll give a small hint on how to actually see writing from the Karana Lord. It's not so clear cut as we may think. 
okay? okay? So let me see the, let me show rather the next slide. In the next slide, we have the chart of Carla Bruni. She is a model. So we should have this combination, right? Who is the Karana? So I have here that she's born on Bhava Karana. The Lord of the Karana is Sun. Let's test this. Is the Sun linked to the third house in any way? It's not in the third house in this chart. But Leo is the third house, which is his sign. Third Lord. Exactly. The Sun is the third Lord and the Karana Lord. I, I don't, I'm not the person who's into looking at modeling pictures, but I believe people say she's very beautiful still. She started her work quite, early, quite some time ago compared to, compared to uh, at least uh, uh, the, what's the, mod, the current setting. She started in 87. I was only six years of age. So I, <laughs> anyway, so, so she's been a model since then. Actually, she became an actress later on. Still extremely beautiful. Now she's even married to a politician, Sarkozy. Nicholas Sarkozy. So, so that third lordship is giving attraction and will give that work. Now, why did I want to examine a chart? Because of education. Now we'll look and we'll see what's going on. In her chart, there were no questions about her birth time. We have that the, the fourth house is Virgo. The Karana Lord is the sun in Sagittarius. From Virgo, Sagittarius is the fourth house. There's no planet on the opposite side of the scale in Gemini to obstruct or hinder the sun from doing anything. And then what happened was she literally dropped out of university, very early in her university, to become a model because she was encouraged to by her peers, her colleagues. All right? So then the question is, Visti, how do you justify this case? So... What happens is in this chart, if you look carefully, the fourth Lord is Mercury and the sun is the Karna Lord. They're actually joined. This should support good education. But what is not listed here is Mercury is combust. He is combust by the planet, which is supposed to give education. So the planet who is giving the books, fourth Lord Mercury, is combust by the current Lord who is giving profession and education. This is a situation where the education will stop, but because of profession. It will stop because of profession. So that's exactly what happened in her case. The Karana Lord, whose only purpose of giving you education is to make you able to work, is saying, don't study. And that is what happened to her. All right? Mercury is combust. But exactly. how do we explain that in moon venus uh, this break happened right if you notice here in the chart first interest is is understanding what is happening from the mahadasha perspective so it was moon mahadasha right now moon is in the 12th from the fourth house now our first question is is this good for education is moon good for the fourth house yes because he is a significator of the fourth house right. he, he supports the fourth house so during moon dasha the person will be forced to do good things for the fourth house like being forced to go to school because it's 12th house you didn't want to do it it wasn't given to you it was forced so it's not a nice house so you're forced he, he would not be forced to study if it was say mars then she'd be forced to not study <laughs> but if moon wants to do good for the fourth house so it's supporting study now venus is on the other side of the fourth house what do you think Venus will say to Moon? Because there's an equal, there's, there are two sides of the scale now. Yeah. Whatever Moon says, he will say opposite for education. Right? So what did Venus say? Don't study. <laughs> so that's why it was Venus Antadasha. It could not have been just any Antadasha. It had to be Venus. Okay? Admittedly, I would have accepted Ketu, who has also joined Venus. Because there, he's also on the other side of the fourth house. So whatever Moon says, these two will do the opposite because they're going to weigh more. That is what we call obstructing the Mahadasha. Okay. Yes. Surely, uh, we could also justify that uh, some people will say second, second from the fourth is the sustenance of the fourth. It, 
Venus afflicted there must have stopped education. That could be very fair. But the point is at this stage, what I would have said is, I know there is something happening in education and likely the person is leaving one education. Is it because they're starting a new education or is it some other reason? That is when we open the D24 chart and check. What are they going to do? Okay, like that. Now, usually if the sixth Lord is joined the planet, who is giving you to stop of education, you're stopping because you're going to get a job. Okay, sixth Lord, Arthaba, okay, right. And in this case, Scorpio is the sixth house. Some, most people say Mars is the Lord. In our tradition, we add Ketu is also the Lord and Ketu is joined Venus. So when Venus Antadasha came, he was not only ending the education and not giving a new education, but he was also giving a job. So the first employment was coming from there. Miss Deep, may, may I ask something? You said go further and check the D24. So would you just apply the Karana in the D24 as it shows and evaluate it in the same way you did the Rashi chart? Um, yes. But to understand what's happening during this event, I would look at the Dasha. Yes. So the D24 then becomes a supporting element to what the Very Dasha is saying. So. Very much so. Because you can have a variety of situations which occur. Let us say the person stopped one education to start another education, which ensured they immediately also were having practical work experience. Mm -hmm. That could also have happened with this Rashi chart. Because I know Venus is saying, whatever moon you're doing in education, no more. And then Venus says, okay. And Venus is going to stop that and give a job. Ketu is joined because he's sixth Lord. So sixth Lord says some new work. But how do I know it's not giving a new education? And so where, where, where the person is being educated at work, it could be. So, so that, that element, I check in the D24. Perfect. Yes. Thank you very much for that clarification. Yeah. Sure, my pleasure, of course. Now, so, and, and catch that sun, right? Third Lord, mm -hmm. should she do modeling? Yes, she should. All right? Very important. You need to catch that. Let's say Carla Bruni came and asked, I'm thinking of stopping my schooling for the sake of becoming a model. Most of us would frown. What are you doing? You're wasting your life. You may not, maybe it won't work out for you. How do you know it will work out for you? The son is the, the current lord and he's the third lord. Yes, you can be a great model. Okay. But that combustion, um, uh, mercury combustion, yes. wouldn't that affect uh, the, the fourth lord? Career, yes. The modeling career. The third lord, beautiful. The third lord is the son. What mercury is affecting is the fourth house. Okay. He's the fourth lord. So he's affecting education. Okay. No, it's also the Lagna Lord. No? Once yes. appearance. Uh, uh, well, here's the funny thing. When we talk of a modeling career, I will show you that the third Lord and the Karana and the first Lord always have some leak. But because the planet is combust, in this case, first Lord combust, it can be that the person changes their career where they don't continue being a model. Oh. Like Karana she was a model for a certain period of time and then stopped it abruptly and only did acting after that. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. It can also require a change of name if the ascendant lord is Mercury combust. Okay. Oh, make it more successful. I like that. Yeah. And especially if it is combust, it's good if the name is foreign from the country you live in. She is super French. Everything about her is French, but her name is far from it. Okay. I, I still remember 12 years back, 13 years back, you, know, you had shared me the technique of how change of name uh, can be seen in a horizon. Yeah. It's, it's somewhere, somewhere in here. <laughs> it's, it's, about, it's about the cobwebs. <laughs> Whatever you have to see in a chart about change of name, you need Mercury and you need the Ascendant Lord. Yeah. And usually change of name is a good idea if the Ascendant Lord is very badly placed and associated with Mercury, then consider seriously, change the name, okay? Then great uh, wealth will come after that, they say. Great opportunities. Or hide the name. 
<laughs> Don't use your name. Hint, hint, Sunil. <laughs> Somebody was hiding themselves for some time, right? <laughs> I believe that person has a mercurial ascendant. Yeah, and for some true. reason, they became very successful when they did that. Yeah, <laughs> true. Their work was successful because of it. Yeah, those days, work was successful, quite successful. Let me see the next chart. Sure. I'll show it rather. A well-known name, Aishwarya Ray. Yeah. She's born during Kalova Karana. Now, I was inspired to take this chart not because of her education. Because now I want to show that third Lord working. Okay. All right? And I'm just putting it in there for people to play with. So they know. Because if Aishwarya Ray came to you and said, should I get into modeling? You better be able to say it. With confidence, without prejudice. Your Karana is Kaulava, Aishwarya Ray. The Lord of the Karana is Mars. Karanesha is Mars. Is Mars Lord of your third house? You are Virgo Ascendant. And the third house is Scorpio. Mars is the Lord. Mars is well placed in the fifth house from the fourth house. So education is not a problem. It is well placed from the ascendant. Is it well placed from the ascendant? People say, no, it's an eighth house. Very bad. It's, this is supposed to be bad, right? Look carefully. Mars is the lord of the ascendant, Lord Mercury. He has his full objective of protecting the ascendant. He's not, he's not bad for the chart, this Mars. He's superb for the chart. Okay? Because he has one objective. You, your body, will not be flawed by Mars. Because the dispositor of the Ascendant Lord is the protector of the Ascendant. Ascendant Lord Mercury in Scorpio. So Mars has now become responsible for ensuring that body and that appearance is absolutely wonderful and beautiful at all times. And he says, I am Karna Lord. I will also give you a job. And that job is to look good, be pretty, and act. Mimic. Mercury is mimicking, acting. And for that, you will be successful. Remember Carla Bruni? Mercury again was joined the Karna Lord. She also became an actress. Okay. All right. So this is the blessing that she has got, that Mars. And what, what, what will Mars also say? He'll say after some time, oh, the body may have become old. Don't worry. I will give you the best surgeons so you will continue to look young. Because Mars gives surgery. All right. This is fire. Fire is surgery. The weapon will not touch the wrong place. Okay? So that is the blessing of Karana Lord. He said, I will give you that profession. So when can you tell a person to be a model? The third house has to be associated with Karana Lord. Correct. Why is that? Because you will be very attractive. <laughs> third house is Maituna Bhava. Okay? You will also make an effort yourself to look very good. Right. Okay? Don't go by my chart. Don't look at my Karna Lord. All right? I, I made a little bit of effort to be on camera today. But <laughs> not, 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 not that much. All right? Yeah. Not enough for a modeling career. I need an ascendant Lord there somewhere. Well, it's not you, you know, after this lecture, I, I'm going to start thinking of coming on camera because my <laughs> Karna Lord, Mercury, is with my third Lord. Oh. Is he son? Oh, it's good. Son, right? it's here, sir. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, I recall your chart looks a bit like Carla Bruni's chart, isn't it? Uh, yeah, my son Mercury is uh, Mithuna Lagna, son Mercury in the 11th house. That's Mercury right. is my yes. similarity. Yes, lovely. Good, good. That son is Atma Karaka. Uh -huh. Maybe there's a better profession for you. We'll see in a minute, okay? You say in the 11th house, right? Okay. 11th house. Yes. Now, let's see. Now we've got this straight. We, I believe this principle has been given. Let me just see one more chart. Yes, there was one more. Pamela Anderson. Okay. And, uh, and uh, we want to see, does this make sense in her chart? Now in her chart, because she must have this. All right. The whole world was screaming Pamela Anderson at one point. She must have this. Now what happens in her chart? She is born during the Karana called Vanija. The Lord of the Karana is Venus. And in her chart, we see that she has Taurus Ascendant, okay? 
and that Venus has gone to Digbala. So this means here is a person who certainly is having the blessing of the ascendant being a positive, very strong. Okay? When the ascendant is positive and strong with the Karana Lord, it means your body and appearance is very positive for work. But it doesn't guarantee that people will be attracted to you. Okay? You, could, you might as well be a bodybuilder. Bodybuilder is not necessarily judged by attraction. Bodybuilder is judged by how much effort they put into their muscles. Did they do the tone right? Did they do the technique right? So many things are important there. But attraction is not necessarily important. Okay? So in her chart, at the first glance, we don't see that clear link. We see but that the third house... Third house link is not so visible. Exactly. In the Rashi chart, it's not there. All right? I'm supposed to say it's not there. That's how I look at the chart. It's not there. And then I'm supposed to say, it doesn't work, this principle. Not fair. My Guruji taught me something wrong. Why did he not teach me? Okay? Question. What's wrong with this chart? Now, if you look more carefully, you see the third Lord is moon. All right? And the moon is in the 12th house with Rahu. Now, this is not a good combination. It's not good. Because it does refer to whenever a lady has an afflicted 12th house, that her first interaction with the opposite sex is not happy. Okay? It is an indication of somebody who could suffer a sexual assault in a lady's child. You don't want such malefics over there. So then you start wondering, what if his carnal lord was there in the Rashi child? This could mean her profession was actually to be in such a state of assault. All right? Some people are converted into, into prostitutes through such combinations. Okay? So actually, when you look a bit more carefully at the chart, you realize, thank goodness that Venus did not contact that moon over there. Not directly, at least in the Rashi chart. All right? But we still need a combination to ensure that she is attractive. So when you examine charts like this, open the Navamsha and see the same Venus. And you see that Venus has gone to Aries in the Navamsha. Now go back and see what Aries is in the Rashi chart. And that is where that moon is, the third law. That means that her appearance is not something she has to work hard to get. It is a given gift from God. Because Navamsha indicates gifts from God. It is a blessing from God that has come. Okay. okay? Yes. So that is what is meant by this concept. Now this concept is called Shukramshaka. Shukra Amsha means the Venus's Navamsha. Ka means see it back in the Rashi chart. So Venus's Navamsha is Aries. See that Ka in the Rashi chart. So in that Rashi chart, this Aries is the place where the third Lord Moon is. And that is the link to her appearance. That is why her appearance is such. That's why you will not see that people simply say, oh, she is good looking. No, no, they will scream she is most beautiful in the planet. Why? Where does, that, where does that scream and shriek come from that this person is so beautiful? This is because of a blessing on Navamsha. When it's a God-given gift, it is more than normal. It is where you say, this appearance is not given just because she took care of herself. She was born like this. She was born to be like this. So, when you, when you see people's amazement with this, you know, it must be a Navamsha thing. Okay? So that is where that came from. That is how it comes. When you see actors which are appreciated beyond normal, we are seeing the Navamsha chart. People who are in any way appreciated beyond normal, see that Navamsha. You will catch the key over there. Okay? That's the reason. All right? Somebody will probably say, oh, but Visti, you could also say, uh, this third Lord Moon is in Taurus Navamsha. It's dispositive as Venus. I will say that's fine, perfectly fine. It's a link to good appearance, yeah. but it does not explain that amazement with her appearance. That is the Shukram Shaka. Okay. Mind blowing. This is all mind blowing. Oh yes. My pleasure, of course. The only unfortunate thing in this chart is that. You have that affliction in the 12th house in her chart. She came out later saying that she had many incidents in her whilst growing up where she was assaulted. That's very unfortunate. You never want to see that in a chart. 
Yeah. That also means if you ever see a lady's chart with such afflictions, it's worthwhile, maybe not to highlight them, but worthwhile to try and see, is there something you can do to block that? Okay. For example, if you see that the 12th house is very negative, strengthen the second house. Okay. Balance. Balance. Okay. Balance. Make okay. that heavier and the 12th house won't get activated. Okay. okay. All right. Let's see the okay. next chart. I think we have a new principle coming up. Let me see. Career. Career. Everybody wants to see how can we find out from Karana Lord, Karanesha, career. That's probably the most essential part of looking at Karanesha. Most essential and what we mostly use it for. And you see, now we come back to this chart again. What I did, I looked at the third house, right? Yeah. That plus sign is the attraction sign. Okay? So the Karana Lord inherently is going to show for everybody how attractive you are. Okay? Okay. Everybody, how attractive you are. The relationship between the third Lord and Karana Lord is mm -hmm. how attractive you are. How much do you work on being attractive, making your appearance attractive for other people, regardless of what you actually look like. So what is this third Lord? The attraction, regardless of what you look like. Okay? okay. Sometimes I meet people and mm -hmm. they look like an average person. But then I open their chart to read their relationships and I think, what has happened over here? And then they tell, one by one, their escapades. And I think, you're not a model. You're not, <clears throat> you know, you're not any, you're not, I would not have noticed that people were so attracted to you. That is because the third Lord is indicating the attraction. It's the pheromones. It's totally physical, biological. If you combine that with the ascendant Lord, you have a person who actually has physical beauty plus attraction. That's the difference. Now, now, the sixth Lord I didn't talk so much about. That is the sign of Virgo. Natural sign of Virgo? Third Lord, sixth Lord? Sorry, sixth Lord? Yeah. Sixth house? And um, Virgo is the place where we harvest. Okay. So when we harvest... Harvesting refers to, since we're not all farmers, attaining, attaining assets, attaining wealth, food, accumulating. The relationship between the sixth Lord and the Karana Lord is going to tell how good you are at hoarding wealth. Okay. So the wealth factor comes from here. Okay. Before we see wealth, we need to see the 10th house. Right. Okay. The, the way of looking at it is slightly different at the 10th house level. We're going to get to that now. Okay. We'll remember that 6th house, right? right? Just when we did 4th, I also looked at 3rd. When we look at 10th, we look at 6th. Just remember it. Treat the 10th house as ascendant, Lagna. See if the Karana Lord, that's the Karanesha, if he is well-placed from the Karma Bhava. That means well-placed from the 10th house. All right? Mm -hmm. Here, the 10th house, we call it Akasha Lagna. Okay. Yeah. And then we're seeing where the Karana Lord is from that. Okay. Now, if this is obstructed, that means we did, we're doing the same as we did with 4th house. What's on either side of the scale? Let's say Karana Lord is in 2nd from the 10th house, but the planet is in 12th from the 10th house. That dasha of the planet in 12th from the 10th house can inhibit the one in 2nd from doing what he needs to do, from giving the right career. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, again, if the Karna Lord lords the tenth house or is joined the tenth Lord, it's very good. It gives good results because there's a natural matching between you wanting to make a career and your work, which is the tenth house. Lest you should do some work which is not leading to a career. That means the tenth Lord and Karna Lord are having a big problem with each other, they're not supporting each other. If the Karana Lord is in 10th house, it's very positive. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I always have some goodie to share, right? So, if I, why don't we, you know, take a little bit of step out of the slides and talk about some goodies about Karana Lord, just before we get into this. Sure. So, 
the Karna Lord's uh, conjunctions, the nature of the planet that it is, could be a clear indicator of the profession to begin with. Oh, really? Yeah. You know? So, for example, if your Karna Lord is Mars, you could be an engineer. Okay. Yes. Okay. If your Karna Lord is Venus, you could be into business. You could also be into clothes. Okay? okay. Fashion particularly, not just clothes, but fashion. Moon would be what we call, you know, garments without any sewing. You know, you make the clothes, I mean, make the garments, the material, and sell on. Okay? It could also be food. You could be into food, you know, you could be in the hotel restoration business, something like that, for the moon. For some reason, people with Karna Lord Sun, they end up in politics. Oh. Okay, somehow or the other, they end up there, all right, in that limelight. For some reason, they cannot I, help it. I, I just saw Donald Trump, his Karanesha, his son, and he's into <laughs> politics. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, yes. When I saw his chart, I also wondered, this is not the first time he's into politics, is it? <laughs> there must be some history. And there was. He, I, this is the second time he's running for president, actually. First yeah. time he went quite, quite early. Uh, but the point is the planet can indicate it. All right? Just the planet. Now, what do I say? You see, when you start reading charts, you'll be like, oh, for the famous people, it's easy. Oh, this person has the sun, politics maybe. This person has Mars, maybe engineer. And, and uh, you will start saying, oh, it works. But then you read people's charts on a daily basis and you're not getting the link. What's wrong? It implies that the person is not doing some work which is making them personally fulfilled. Okay. So they're not aligned. They're not aligned. Exactly. The Karna Lord gives work, which gives a lot of personal satisfaction. If a person is working a job and they don't feel satisfied, you know there's an issue there between the Karna Lord and the, and the actual work in their chart. So this is a situation where the Karna Lord could be obstructed. All right? Okay. So when you read this, don't expect it to work every time. Because what you could be doing could be ha having nothing to do with the Karna Lord. After all, in Jyotish, there are so many principles to see profession. So many. All right? Sure. And Lord, people will swear by. I can show you charts where it doesn't work. Okay? Tenth Lord from Moon, people swear by. Most swear by Tenth Lord from Moon. I've not heard anybody say it doesn't work. Okay? I've heard some people say it doesn't always work. But it most of the time works. All right? And in those charts, we have some fun. All right? So, um, so the tenth lord from moon usually indicates the profession. Usually. Okay. Because that's actually what you've been trained to do. Yeah. All right? My tenth lord from moon is Mercury. I'm a trained linguist, actually. I'm a trained linguist. All wow. right? And Mercury is joined Jupiter. I should be good at grammar and linguists and everything. But my moon and Rahu have an exchange. So instead of seeing tenth from moon for my profession, try I see tenth from Rahu? It's Mars joined in Parivartan with the sun. The Jyotish is coming from Mars sun. It's not coming from Mercury Jupiter. That's not Jyotish. Okay. Jyotish is the eye of the Vedas. You need light, sun and Mars. Okay? The tenth lord from moon indicates this. That is the profession. How to know one is satisfied doing that profession? How to know you will have success in doing that profession? The current lord decides that. Okay. And also tells you when the success comes. Okay. So I told you my Karana is Vishti. It's Saturn. How can that be Jyotish? It's not Jyotish. It is not. All right. Actually, if you look at the text, Vishti Karana is indicating a butcher. All right. Because Saturn, you have to, some, there has to be some cries, some tears, the animal is dying, the butchering is happening. Miserable thing, actually. Very, uh, the only good thing about Vishti Karana will be if you become a sadhu in essence, if that's the case. I'm not a sadhu, far from it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But what if I was doing something related to Saturn in my work? Then I will have satisfaction, right? Yeah. Yes. Maybe you are. <laughs> Could be, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so if I did something related to that, I will get job satisfaction. So now for all of us others who are not in this limelight of the professions I will show in a minute, we need to ensure that we are doing something 
which is linked to the Karna Lord, so as to ensure that we are getting that satisfaction in our profession. All right? Okay. okay. Otherwise, we may, be, we may be going to the wrong places right. for our satisfaction. Correct. All right? That is, the, that is the true essence of the Karna Lord in this case. Okay. Now I'm getting it. I'm getting it now. That is what God has given you as your capability. Use it. Right. You will be successful. Aligning people's light. Uh, exactly. Mm-hmm. This is fabulous. I knew you were going to go over the top, but you, you've gone further than I thought. You slid. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let's see. We have to finish the slides also. No? Maybe you'll change your mind by the end. So I doubt it. I doubt it. The years with you, I doubt it. <laughs> Let us see the first example of this. Okay. Here we are. Al Gore. I think this is the first example. I didn't press too many buttons. It's true. Yeah. Now, what do you expect his Karna Lord will be? Linked to the sun, right? Somehow, join the sun, is the sun. He is born in Baba Karna. The Lord of the Karna is the sun. Done. <laughs> Easy. What work do we have to do now? People will be saying, what about his 10th house? What about his 10th Lord? What about the 10th Lord from moon or 10th house from moon? The Nabam show of that 10th Lord from moon or whatnot. And maybe you will be arriving at the sun. Maybe. Okay. So take it easy. All right. We just had the Karana Lord. So I, I will share something. Um, take the uh, 10th Lord from Sun. It's Jupiter, right? Mm. It's in Sagittarius. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, Sagittarius is the natural uh, ninth house boss, right? So the person could work in governance. Take the 10th Lord from Moon. It's Mercury. All right. Mm. Or Rahu. Choose one of them. They say Virgo, Virgo can be loaded by either. We should be expecting Mercury to have some link to Leo or the fifth house. I don't see that it is. It's just opposite Leo. That's all I get. So maybe it didn't work. Okay. Just we'll try that in the next case also. All right. Either way, we have Karna Lord as the sun. Now, he became vice president during Mercury's Shoda Shotri Dasha. All right. And he lost the, his election during Venus Dasha. I'm only seeing Mahadasha here. Okay. So we do know that he's indicated his profession by the sun. All right. And we see that this sun is in the 12th from the 10th house. You notice that? Mm-hmm. Yes. Now, you'll notice that the other side of that 10th house, the second they're from, has Venus. So if he was running a Dasha of Venus, it would be very difficult for him to succeed in his profession as a politician. He lost the election in Venus Dasha. Right. Even though Venus is his own sign. It's, it's he was not supporting the Karana. Yeah. But yes, what, there's something good did come out of that. He became uh, one of the best paid lecturers after that. He traveled the country and earned dividends from lecturing. And he was particularly focused on the environment. Venus made him go a different way. All right. It it was not the way that he envisioned for himself. All right. (laughs) So just because you lose in one sphere does not mean you can gain, you cannot gain somewhere else. But he's not giving professional satisfaction. In fact, every time on each of his lectures, he made a point to say, and please don't call me Mr. President. Because he was feeling very unhappy about the fact that he had lost in the way that he had. He started his lectures like that. That tells you that he was not satisfied. But he did something that had meaning to him. You know, when I see his... uh, Please correct me here, Vishti. I I see a link now that this Venus Dasha, his Venus in the Naumash is in the fourth house. Fourth house normally we take as Earth homeland, you know, mm-hmm. like nature. Yes. And he did work for nature in a way. 
Yes, yes. Okay. We should also try to look for the causes he worked for from uh, the signs of Mercury. Because Mercury usually has some link to nature. Okay? When, when you're looking at nature, not just as home, but also your entire environment, mm -hmm. there should be some Mercury linkage. I did not look far in his chart. Um, just at first glance, I would have said, you'll see Mercury in the eighth house. He's in the sign of Aquarius. That's normally not a sign of nature. But you see that Varnada Lagna over there? You see that BL? Yes, yeah. People yes. with Mercury join this BL. They're normally uh, very obsessed with uh, nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a topic throughout their life. They're always thinking about it. All the time thinking about it. Okay. Can you repeat that? Can you repeat that? Uh, yes, yes. See that VL over there? It's called Varnada Lagna in this. Varnada Lagna, yeah. Var Varna means something to do with caste, we say, but actually it's more, more so related to profession. Profession. What sustains you? It, what sustains your place in this planet. And Mercury is there. So what is sustaining him is Mercury environment. So, and that is what he was talking about during the election also. During the election, he was talking a lot about the environment. Technology and environment together, that was his, that was his platform. All right? His major platform. We in Denmark were joyous when we saw him. We said, we love this guy. He must be Danish. We also talk like that. Technology and environment. Two, two most important things. To do the both together. Okay, so we loved him. We thought he must win. We were so unhappy when he lost. Okay, <laughs> so, so either way, my point was to show the Karana and this Dasha just so slightly. Now the next slide, we talk a little bit more about this. Career success. Mm -hmm. The planet lording, the fifth weekday from the Karana Lord will give Raja Yoga during its dasha or anta dasha. So when you have to time Raja Yoga, you need to know the Karana. Then you know which is the fifth planet from him in weekday order. And that planet's dasha will give the result. Conversely, the planet loading the sixth weekday from the Karanesha will hinder or stop the career. So if I take the sun, which was Bhava Karana for Al Gore, the fifth planet is Venus. And, sorry, the fifth planet is Jupiter, correction. And the sixth planet is Venus. Venus. He was running Venus Dasha. Um, interesting. Yes. That's what happened in his horoscope also. That's right. He was running Venus. Now, what does it cause? Hinder or stopping? It's called Stambana, actually. We call it Stambana. The, the exact Sanskrit word, Stambana, is happening from this planet. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> now, so you have to know this for each. There's a simple way to do it. Take the planets from Sun to Ketu. That means in order from Sun to Ketu. In this order, Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn, Rahu, Ketu. In this order. And from the planet you're looking at, count with your fingers. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Five. It's fifth. Thursday. So that's Thursday. Jupiter is the Lord. Don't make sure you include the nodes. So when you get to Saturn, Saturday, go Rahu plus K2 and, and then go to Sunday. Okay? No. Don't avoid it. In this order, make the list and then you will get this order that I've given. There's nothing magical about it. It's technical and it should be correct. You, should, you can correct me if there's a mistake. But that's what we do. We want to see this fifth planet. If he gets activated, a good Dasha. Okay? George W. Bush. I think his middle name is William, anyway. He is born during Bhava Karana, the Karana Lord is son. Oh, another one. Another one. <laughs> May I make a special note about his chart? He is also Cancer Lagna. He is Cancer Ascendant with the son as the Karana Lord. This may not be a coincidence. Okay. The fifth planet is Jupiter. And the sixth is Venus. Correct. Okay. Successful politician rose to governor during Buddha Dasha. That's Mercury Dasha. I'm using a specific Dasha form called Dvisaptati Sam. You, do you know that uh, Gore became vice president in Buddha Dasha? Mercury Dasha? No. Okay. okay. It actually is listed in the previous chapter. He was, became vice president in Mercury's Dasha. Okay. Okay. So now... I have not still found out what is the special thing about Mercury. My Guruji didn't teach me. So I'm not teaching you. 
I'm just saying, maybe there's something to be studied there. Okay. Now, when Jupiter's Dasha came, which is that fifth planet, hmm. he won the presidential election. And he held the presidency for two terms, for the exact period of Jupiter's Dwisaptati Sama Dasha. As soon as the Dasha was over, he was out. Literally for that term. Now, some people using Vimshotri Dasha will say he started in one Dasha, he ended in another Mahadasha, and so on and so forth. And they will try to figure out the reason why he won the re-election and all. We in the tradition make a lot of effort to find the correct Dasha for an individual. Because if you find the correct Dasha, you can make, firstly, your life much easier reading the chart. And secondly, you can get real exact results of what's happening. In this case, he got it in Jupiter, and before Jupiter ended, you see the end presidency was still in Jupiter. Throughout it was Jupiter. As long as he was in Jupiter, he was in power. Okay? Very important. Very. It works in this chart. Cancer ascendant, sun is Karna Lord, Raj Yoga from Jupiter. Okay. His father's chart. His oh. father does not have cancer ascendant. It's Leo Ascendant. He is born during the Karana of Garija or Gara, some people call it. The Lord of this is Jupiter. Oh, the principle is not working anymore. I. <laughs> but Chan is respecting it. Oh. See, you, you got me there. You got me. I was just about to say, no, no, what are we going to do? The principle doesn't work. And you caught it quickly. The sun and Jupiter having mutual aspect upon each other. Correct. This is Leo Ascendant. And the Karana has changed, but the profession is staying the same, seemingly. Okay? All right. Now, sun is aspecting, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, he was elected vice president in Mars Dasha. I'm using Shoda Shotri for him. And I'm only looking at Mahadasha, notice that. Now, the fifth planet from Jupiter is Ketu. But I don't recall that, uh, that you get every planet you want in Shoda Shotri Dash. In fact, Rahu is left out and Ketu has to take two, two uh, roles in this Dasha. So the Dasha, when it comes to the nodes, some of these Dashas, you may have to do a little bit more work. Anyway, let's try see Ketu. Ketu is an Aquarius. He's joined Mars. He was elected vice president in Mars Dasha. It does work. Something is going on here. All right. Now, in the Dasha of Jupiter, he became president. All right? Now, Jupiter is the Karana Lord itself. So, obviously, he's going to support his, his continued role. All right? Basically, he is living off Mars Dasha. All right? Mm -hmm. And he held this until he lost re-election in Jupiter Dasha again. It was still Jupiter Dasha, but the Anta Dasha was Mars now. Mm -hmm. So, now we must wonder. Okay, what was going on here? Mars first gave, gave then Mars vice presidency gave. and then took it away later. And then took away his presidency later. Yeah. What are we missing over here? What's going on here? What could be the reason? Or is it that Mars gave some of it, but he also had to give other some other results as well? What's going on? So if we look carefully here. What we're interested in is to see if Mars is in some way badly placed. All right. If Mars is in any way associated with planets which are not good for work, for occupation. All right. So we notice here in the chart that Mars it's himself, his own placement is in Marana Karakstan. Okay. Seventh house is called Marana Karakstan. You see Mars is a celibate. What's he doing in the house of marriage? Simple. He's not well placed over there. In fact, we go as far as saying that he feels like he's dying over there. Mm -hmm. And he will drag everybody else with him. And that happens. So if Mars is going to give results in his Mahadasha, he will give, give results of Ketu. But in his Antadasha, he will give results of his own placement. This is a Dasha principle. Can, can you please repeat that? I will do that, yes. It may be too fast. People will pause, go back and forth. The Mahadasha result of Mars will be by his conjunction with Ketu. But the Antadasha will not give the results of Ketu, will be of Mars himself. The reason he gave power 
Maz Mahadasha was because Ketu wanted to give him power. But the Antadasha has to be of Maz himself. And that is Maran Karaka. Exactly. Now this rule is only for uh, interpreting the Dasha for Marana Karaka placements or come all? All Dasha. All Dasha. Mahadasha, take the conjunctions. Antadasha, see the planet itself. Multiple conjunctions, you need to contact this too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> all right. See, so that's how we're using it in this chart. Now, keep a, in the previous charts, two charts, Algo and Bush, the sun was the Karana Lord and it was a Cancer Ascend in both cases. And in both cases, those, that sun was differently placed, one in Pisces, one in Gemini. What is the similarity they both held? The sun lords the second house. The Karana Lord in both the cases was loading their second house. Hmm. What does this Karana Lord have association with? It's again alone, just like the other two charts. Does it have an association with the second house? The second Lord is Mercury in mutual aspect with it. Jupiter. So can we say maybe the second house becomes important for people in power? Okay, because it's the house of administration. Mm, good question. Good question. Mm -hmm. Let's see another chart. I think this is actually the last chart. Okay. Mm -hmm. Leo ascendant, Donald Trump. Okay. Bhava Karana. <laughs> Again, we're getting that Bhava Karana, right? The Karana Lord is the sun. All right. But this is Leo ascendant. Just like H.W. Bush, Leo yeah. Ascent. All right. We need an association with the second house, I thought. Now, this is where some people will say, Visti, we can't see it. But I will say, look, I was taught that Virgo it has two lordships. One is Mercury, one is Rahu. And Rahu is joined the sun here. So I do get a link to the second lord. So if he's to be in power, it could be because of that. Mm. But I don't know him as a politician. I know him as a businessman, people will say. If he loses the election, there'll be further doubts. They'll say, but Visti, he could not have become in power. So there's no association between the second house and the Karana Lord. But I want to give you a principle now. Treat, if you're treating the 10th house as the ascendant, then the houses in the chart will now change. The Karana Lord is supposed to give you a profession from the perspective of the 10th house. So if one house is related to power, like the 5th house, you should see the 5th house from the 10th house, not from the ascendant. Okay. And so the reason why in the charts of politicians we're getting a link to this second house is because the 5th from the 10th house is the second house from the ascendant. And that is giving the link to the karana for people in power. Okay. So the profession is being defined by the houses from the tent house. I promised to say if I could find an author, right? I promised I'd find an author. Did you know that Donald Trump is an author? He's written three autobiographies. Yes. I wonder why he needs three autobiographies to begin with. What's going on? And of course, with enough gap in time for him to have events to fill those autobiographies. So that, you know, or something new happened since last, new autobiography, really. How is it that he has a link to the third from the 10th house? You see, we need third from the 10th house. The sun is in Taurus and Venus is in third therefrom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. From the 10th house. So that is ensuring that he will be an author. I think Al Gore is also an author. We can check later, all right? So... The third from the 10th house is giving this. I think even Bush, W. Bush has give, wrote, written a book. I think that son is in 12th house, right? Karana Lord. That's third from 10. Again, he's also written a book. Trump has written three. So, right. so if I may ask, mm -hmm. from the Karanesha, mm -hmm. the third we should see or from the 10th? You have to see it from the 10th house. Basically, what you're doing is seeing 
from the tenth house where the karna lord is placed what it lords what it joins of yogas because it's those yogas which are defining the profession okay okay so which house is important for astrologers 11th house is the study but what is the practice it's 8th house right so you need to see 8th from the 10th mm -hmm. so yeah. astrologers tend see it from 10th is 5th house jyotishas tend to have a link between their karana lord and the 5th house they will have this interesting interesting, interesting. so from the 10th house see the houses and see what the karana lord is supporting that can be your profession okay that is the meaning of that that's how we use this information okay that is the hidden secret in all this sun can mean give you association with any type of surya any type of sun indications how do you know that their person is working towards getting power people have to support fifth house is voters okay those who vote for you are the fifth house so from the 10th see the fifth that is second house and if karana lord associates you will have people voting for you he has already got that people are voting for him in the primaries they're going to be voting for him now so that's guaranteed and it's from a political sphere it's guaranteed so all he he has all that is required and i can justify yes rahu is lord of virgo i was taught that and it works okay mm -hmm. he has all the combinations at this stage he does not need to be elected president for us to justify that he has this okay people have voted for him okay now for some reason he entered the candidacy for president in buddha dasha mercury dasha hey again karna lord son and this mercury seems to be doing something for them all right he withdrew he didn't want to continue further mm -hmm. he did not get that far i believe mm -hmm. okay he managed to be in the race for about uh, what is this four months and then he himself withdrew maybe he saw there was no chance i don't know mm -hmm. i don't remember i wasn't there okay so that mercury is always an instigator of sorts okay. for these people with karana lord sun his second entrance into the in, into this presidential election that the second entrance into the president candidacy was during venus dasha venus mahadasha But I don't think Venus is very good for people with Sun Karana Lord, right? Sambana Graha, six. Yeah. So we should be expecting him to lose based on this, and the election is in Venus Dasha, but the Anta Dasha is Jupiter. What a predicament for astrologers! What a predicament! Really, really. And, and then I see the yes. but you see oh, look at all the butts i will tell you now the sun who's the karna lord is in taurus so shouldn't venus support the karna lord but they're enemies but he has to support him it's like supporting your enemy yeah. this is exactly what the people are saying they don't like any of the the candidates they don't want to vote for any of them and they have to choose the lesser of two evils according to them wow mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This is a situation literally of an enemy having to support him if he has to win. Actually, so that actually considering what's happening these days in US with both of them Hillary and I think people I understand what you're saying it's it's working out actually in his life right now. Mm -hmm. And what a situation and Venus is supposed to be opposing him also so do you think he that's that venus which is showing up in the chart all right mm -hmm. so obviously when venus is so negative towards him it does imply a situation which is not good can we say that his wife is supporting him now no you see the problem so how do we explain it if the wife doesn't support doing venus mahadasha mm -hmm. okay. can we if no ladies are supporting him if he doesn't win the ladies vote somehow 
And this is exactly his campaign, if I understood recently. Mm -hmm. His campaign is focusing on bringing back those lady voters. All right? Because this is the problem. Because obviously, if this doesn't work for you, then the Mahadasha is bad for you. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But I'm leaving that question open for good reason because we have not analyzed the Shamsha. The Shamsha will decide. But I will say, in a start like this, you should normally expect it will be very difficult to win. Okay. I did. Very difficult. Yes. So you said it all, Nere. Who's the president? <laughs> Please don't quote me on that. All right. Yes. All right. Well, but I also want to see something else. Life is not all about uh, about the presidency. He had a life before this. All right. Why hmm. is he into real estate? Why is that? Why is his wealth coming from that? We should be able to see that. Of course. Fourth house from the tenth house. Fourth from the tenth is Leo in his case. The sun lords it. Yes, mm -hmm. that is his power. Mm -hmm. That is his wealth, his main wealth. Okay. Well, how do we know him so well? Not because of real estate, as much as his appearances on TV. He has TV shows, right? Mm -hmm. People in that limelight will usually have some connection to the seventh house that's 10th from the 10th i've noticed that by rahu aquarius is that 10th from the 10th mm -hmm. we consider rahu as a lord then he's joined son so there's a link so like that we're supposed to start viewing all the yogas in the chart like this and see all the planets and see what they load from the 10th house and by doing so we can estimate which types of areas is the person getting income from or rather making their profession through their career through mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what would you estimate is necessary to be an engineer somebody says can i become an engineer you need cars firstly cars. that's the number one and mm -hmm. then, now you need a house so which house will i choose it depends on what they do in their engineering profession right there's so mm -hmm. many options mm -hmm. maybe they have to be a technical writer. Technical writer means somebody who draws schematics. Okay. Then the third from the 10th has to be activated. All right. Mm -hmm. Maybe they, uh, that somebody who will draw the actual schematics for a plan will do that. Uh, a mechanical engineer may not do that. Maybe that role is more repair oriented. So I would expect maybe the sixth from the 10th house possibly. Okay. Maybe somebody has to look at things. Maybe their job is to look at things all the time. Second from the 10th. All right, their view, their vision is important. Okay, maybe somebody has to predict what's going to happen in an engineering complex or in a, in a building structure. So then they need the eighth from the tenth house. There's forecasting, predicting. Okay, <laughs> so like that, we can be more flexible, but we need at least a Graha Karaka. Okay. <laughs> like that. Okay. All right, all right. Oh, Christy, you've done it to all of us. This is wonderful. <laughs> can, can you uh, uh, conclude? Yes. Yes. Actually, we have almost covered the conclusion. Yes. I yes. listed the charts of the actresses and models, Carla Bruni, Pamela Anderson, and Ashwari Ray. They have a right. strong link between the third lord and coronation. Right. The politicians had a strong link between the second house and the coronation. Mm -hmm. And the two wealthy businessmen, Trump and Gates had a link between Karanesha and the first and fourth. Fourth. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I must have made a mistake here. Uh, oh, no. Yes, first and fourth is right. Why fourth? Because it's opposite the tenth, seventh house business. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Fourth and seventh. Also, we say fourth house is also the house of fortune. Yeah. <laughs> That's a type of fortune, yes. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. It was my Vishti, pleasure. Vishti, it's, uh, yeah, you could stop sharing the skin. This is a genius of, nobody, I don't think so, anybody has ever worked on Karana like this in the history of astrology. It, it's, it's a fact. I mean, it's a fact. Nobody's brilliant. Absolutely hats off to you, Vishti. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm quite sure this video, people will have to keep on revisiting, revisiting, revisiting to digest 
all that you have shared it's new knowledge completely new knowledge hey, for the, most of the sphere it is uh, new knowledge, new knowledge indeed um, what should you be interested or concerned with when you read the Quran now the flaws the ones I mentioned in the beginning we have not even touched in the charts okay and we will when you come back again you have agreed to do something more with us in a month to six weeks so um you can be sure you're going to hear from me looking forward to it look at this is wonderful Missy. My thank you so course. much it is My pleasure, of course. beyond i mean hats off to you Misty. thank you so much it's completely i mean astounding this I mean, no wonder I said at the start, the Sultan of Astrology. Definitely. Uh, definitely. I, I don't know if Sultan is appropriate, but thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. Good night and thank you ever so much.